end of the month it'll be 12 months since I turned pro. In 12 months, look at how much my life has changed. And you hear the announcer call your name and you get like this sudden rush of energy, like an electric shot. Like, yeah, you get an adrenaline rush, you get like goosebumps, you get your stomach's like doing 100, 150 backflips. Like, that is a point where they say, you're next, is when like it drops and I'm like, shit, I'm nervous. I remember when I lost my first um, professional kickboxing fight for a world title and I just broke down like I was in tenure I broke down because I was like you put everything into it man like you give your blood sweat and tears you, you sacrifice so much and it doesn't yeah. come off and, and that's only the and my coach explained it he said that's the, the winning instinct in you Welcome to the Drop In with Pindy podcast from Warriors TMA Academy, a podcast for everyone from business inspirational leaders, combat sports enthusiasts, martial artists, and fitness fans. Together, we can build our self-discipline, confidence, and positive mindsets through great leaders. Now, here's your host, coach, and former pro fighter, Pindy Matahar. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming on to the Dropping with Pindy podcast here. I am delighted to announce I am here with the one and only Mr. Dylan Chima. Dylan, thank you so much for Thanks coming for down and, and, and being part of this amazing podcast. Um, I'm kind of starstruck being in front of you at the moment, <laughs> so it's really good to... <laughs> Likewise, yeah, to be fair. No, 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 But I just, I wanted to get you on for a while. I met, I dropped a, dropped you a message, obviously, a few weeks ago, and it's, yeah. I'm so glad that you responded back and it's been like, yeah, let's be part of it because you've got one of the most coming from the way you, what you're doing on on the fight scene at the moment uh what you've achieved in in the space you of turning pro in boxing your story is is one of the best stories I, i've i've looked upon and like it's not your typical rocky movie story yeah. where you've yeah. come from like the bronx and you know you've had to work it that way you've you've actually you're very well educated you you've come yeah. from a not even a boxing background you've come from a another sport as yeah. such uh, and you're absolutely smashing it in the boxing Thank world. You. But Appreciate before we, it. before we get into that and like what you're doing right now, like how did the the how did it all start in terms of combat sports or or your as a sport that you were into first? Like, I would it say it's start? like a long time ago. It was like I was probably like ten or well, I did taekwondo um, oh, or what? taekwondo or karate. One yeah, or two. Well, when I was a kid, you know, when you're yeah. growing up and like your mom or your dad said, "Oh, just go down and just try this," and you try loads of different sports, and I, and I did it for like a few years. I was probably like five or six. Did it for like a year or two. Um, didn't enjoy it. Uh, it I probably was just too young at the time. Yeah, yeah. Left it and then obviously went to school and stuff and, and just carried on with normal like swimming, football. And then so one of my best mates at school, uh, um, Umaji, he's uh, in, in our year at primary school, it was me and him as the only two seat guys in, in, the, in the whole year. No way. Or, well, no, in the whole school at that in time. Oh, uh, wow. And then obviously I had my younger brothers and sisters like coming, coming, coming up. up as well. Yeah. But at that time it was just us two. And we was, I was probably like, 10 and he said look my dad's a coach yeah um we go and go down and do training over in Birmingham and we literally just um go there we, t we turn up we play a bit of football then we do training session and then we go home he goes it's just like he goes we literally just ha have a laugh basically yeah. and I went and I, d I just enjoyed it then from like that first session um uncle call him uncle because he's uncle baggy like he, oh. he's he's been there since day one as, as you as you probably yeah. tell from now but he's is is uncle the one with the uh, with the daddy with, with the, the beard, but he yeah. was never a, he wasn't a no. Like, he what, grow he, first, he's, he? he's he's started to grow his beard uh, probably like just before lockdown, probably like 2019. Okay, okay. But before that, like unrecognizable shaved, head. shaved, shaved head. head, he was yeah, bald, yeah. Uh, right, shaved so. his beard all the time. Like every time he used to come to fight, he's made sharp, sharply shaved. Now he's like yeah. make sure he ties his butt guard really nice yeah. and make sure like his his beard's nice and nice and groomed and everything. So he's it, he's changed over the years. But yeah, he he's been there since day one, and he used to pick us up from home because he used to live around the corner from me and drive us all over to the gym uh, and then drop us all home after. Um, so like, honestly, like during like, you get one of those really like great people in the sport who does it, who does it for out of love of the sport and help like young people get into it and, and just does it because he loves it to help people. He's one of them. Um, and yeah, so I just went down the gym when I was 10 and I fell in love with it, to be honest. I enjoyed it and I picked it up really, re really well and ended up, competing like six months later and and then that was it fell in love that was it that movie. was it yeah and what this this is taekwondo or is this uh this sorry, was this sorry was sorry this, this was, was kick this was kickboxing yeah is yeah, this yeah. That, uh, yeah cash 
This this was so Uncle used to be uh, one of the what had had a club of caches over right. somewhere else, over in Neutrals. Okay. Uh, Neutrals in Birmingham. So we used to train nice. at a school, um at a secondary school I think it was. Um and then we used to go over to Cash's gym like once a week um and, and train over there and then we essentially and then we just basically all migrated over to train at Cash's like two, three times a week. Um so yeah, that 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 was that was that was like the start of start of the journey. That's where we all fell in love with it all and talk, yeah. talk talk to us about that first that first combat match fight experience you had uh, you what 10 11 what, what i was about you? i think i was 10 Did yeah you? 10 coming on 11 but so like was the, uh, i'm guessing this is um no head head contact or head no contact? no head contact so yeah. I, I, as you'll probably know like yeah. is it quite similar with tie boxing as yeah, well yeah, isn't yeah. it where they just for, for juniors and kids they don't do head contact yeah, all, but, we didn't yeah. wear a body shield but it was an inter club so like i was fighting someone from another one of cash's schools somewhere else and the whole idea was just give the kids experience, get them in there, just let them have a feel of, of what it's like to get in there. Um, we still wore head, head guard just in case. So I had a head guard on and stuff and it was just body contact. And the kid within the first minute just hit me straight in the face. I've never been punched in the face like that before. Like, I remember, like as a kid, like, I never used to get in fights or anything. Yeah. Um, and I got punched in the face and I remember turning away and I was like, what am I gonna dab my glove with my nose? Um, and there was like blood all over. I was like, nah, nah. Turned, to, turned to uncle in the corner. He was like, you're like, he, he went to the ref. I think the ref called it off by that point. Um, and, and, and that was it. The game over. So I won on disqualification. Went back to the gym the following week. He was like, there's another uh, light continuous show, uh, which is again, it just more like give you more like ring craft. If you can have a winner and loser, head contact on this one. And I ended up competing against a lad who had like 30 or 40. So, like, do you know, sometimes you get these kids that have been doing it since they were like three, four, five years old. And then there's me that come in like after about six, seven months and, and jumped in the deep end. And I did lose, but I, I'd done really well. And, and I remember the coach back then, the opponent's coach, he gave me really like high feedback. He said, you are going to, you could do really well if you, if you keep out. And I took that loss. Even though I took that loss, I took that feedback afterwards and that's what really like spurred you on. Sp yeah, spurred me on. Really got my dug my feet in and thought, like, let's let's give this a go. Nice. Um, and then I literally from then I haven't looked back. Like there hasn't been a moment in time where I thought, oh, this is getting too much. Oh, I wish I was doing something else, or oh, I don't really like it today. I don't really want to go to gym. That's never like that's never ever crossed my mind. Proper committed into hundred percent. Yeah. And how did you find fitting that? Because obviously traveling from Coventry to Birmingham as a kid. Obviously, you're saying on calls, Dan, he's the yeah. one that was giving the lift, but you, you, you're, you're in school. Whether or not you took school seriously, yeah. I don't know, but like yeah. you're in school, you're training, you're competing. Like, how was he fitting it all in, not getting burnt out? It, uh, it's, it's, odd, it's like, it's different as a, as a child, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, obviously, this is where that, the whole, where, where my parents probably come into it, my family. So, I still live my, my, my baby and Bob, my grandparents, uh, my mom and dad, uh, and my younger brother, and my, my dad's younger brother and his family. So, wow. there's like 11 of us in, 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 one, in house. one house. Wicked. Um, so, we're still like one big Asian family. So, that can be difficult as well. But luckily, the family and the parents and the adults in the house supported. Not just me, like my brothers as well, because they did it with me as well. So they supported us on it. So like Bibi and Bobby used to take us to the gym, used to pick us up. So they were doing like that hour drive to the gym and back. They were doing that. And, you know, they're not like, they're not exactly like, you know, young anymore. They're like, you know, they were like 50 odd, six, coming on 60 at that time. So, so yeah, it, fortunate for them. But um, like I was only going over to Birmingham probably twice a week. Um, and it got to a point where I started to pick up the levels in kickboxing and, and starting to, you know, pr progress on it and fight for some of those titles. Um, and the coaches and, and the other professional fighters in the gym, they were like, you started running. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, mom won't let me run on the road because yeah. it it's, not, it's not safe. It's not yeah. safe. They don't trust me. I probably don't trust me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> probably like end up getting like missed the yeah. pavement and run over or fall over or something oh, stupid man. like that. But um, so that, that's what they, so they were like, you need to start running. Uncle was like, you've got a decent sized garden, just go run around your garden. So I used to come back from school, um, run around in the garden, go upstairs, pack my bags, rucksack with loads of books, sit on the end of my bed and do like loads of sit-ups holding this book bag and do some press-ups and that. And then just go downstairs, have one ruti. That was the dieting that I used to do, was just have one ruti. E exactly. Still, do you know what? This is a thing like ruti is still part of our staple diet. You know, do you know how like English people are probably built up on bread? We're built with ruti. We our, our body breaks it down 
easily, yeah. you know. So we can still have ruddy. Um, so I was having one ruddy, and then I was doing my schoolwork after. So I still did my schoolwork. I still had to do it because yeah. otherwise, mom was like, or no, my dad was like, if if you don't do well in school, we're gonna pull you out of kickboxing. And th- so there were some mo- there were some moments where where that did that did happen because I didn't do well enough in school. So you know that was always a priority from from my parents. Yeah. Do what you enjoy, do what you love. But make sure that you've got the grades to back it because, you know, you can go full into kickboxing. If it never, if it never turned out like today, then what? Then what do I do? I've got no education. I've got no no sporting career. Then what am I supposed to do? So you've got to be realistic as well at that sort of age. So, but that was where the drive came from. I used to just go back from school. The days I wasn't in the gym in, with, up in Birmingham, I was running at home. Um, if I wasn't running, then the, I used to do like football and swimming. So that was the other activities, and it all just ha- it all just helps. Yeah, that's 100%. brilliant. It's so, it's, it's so good to hear that. It's so good. Did you do, did you do any like? Because I know in kickboxing they do like a lot of junior. Um, I don't I for, I forget what they call it. Not wacko. Is it like junior kickboxing championships and stuff like that? Yeah. Did you do all of that or wasn't no? Really I, away I wasn't from that? really. I wasn't really bothered about like the whole. Because yeah. the championship setup was like yeah. you go down for a day and you just like fight three, like four times. Isn't it? I yeah. was more interested in the full contact. So, you know, the evening shows right, where you right. had like yeah, yeah. a bit similar to the boxing, a bit similar to MMA, a bit yeah. similar to the Taiwan, a bit similar to, you know, you go on a Saturday night and you go watch fights. So that that's what I used to do. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't bothered about like these tournaments. These tournaments, because I, I didn't want to do like the. I, well, not that I didn't want to do it. We just didn't do it in our gym. We yeah. were trained to go and knock someone out yeah that was the mentality was go and win and and do some it's damage it's almost like k was it were you was your style similar to k is it k1 was it, it like it, so what like, so what happened was, like, was it because what it what it was it was full contact kickboxing was like brought over so in america do you know when they didn't want to do tie boxing they, they did go. where they used to wear the long trousers so that's what they did and then it went into low kick and then k1 created this organization over in uh in japan or china or wherever it was and that's where k1 before that, it was just low kick kickboxing, and they added oh, knees. Right. It was so it was to get closer to tie boxing, but not fight the ties because the they were just battling yeah. the crap out of everyone that yeah, came yeah, in, didn't they? Yeah, at, yeah. at that that's time, true. that's yeah, what they yeah, were doing. Well. And there's only a few that didn't, like Liam Harrison, Damian Trainer, like these elite guys. Yeah, but how many can you count that were beating the ties? Literally on one hand, isn't it? You can't even. Cut, yeah, exactly. If 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 that. Yeah. yeah, I remember watching all them guys when I was younger as well because you know my coach instilled in us like. We even today will learn stuff off loads of different. So some of the some of the grappling stuff that we're doing boxing, yeah. we learn from MMA. We learn from one of my coaches loves jujitsu, yeah. and we'll do some of that style of like we break breaking out how to break out of a guard. If someone's tying you up, how to maneuver their body and turn out, or how to use that to tie someone up. We can still use all that. It's still legal. It's still like still up here. Some of it's see. I don't. I'll, I'll be straight. I'll be straight with. It. I don't know too much of the rule sets of, of Western boxing. Like when yeah. I, whenever I watch on TV, I'll see them tying up and I see a referee come in to say break straight away. Yeah. But I'm guessing that's that in but sometimes itself sometimes is can, a battle. That's it. But sometimes you can get a referee that will just say work out of the break. So if you if you're both clinched up and you're both holding onto each other, you, yeah. he, they might let you work out. If you've got one hand free, and one hand's tied up. You can still use that other hand, but there's certain ways like how you can use your body. Yeah. But a lot of that we've learned from MMA and there's a lot of stuff that we watch from, still take a lot from kickboxing, how, uh, different different types of movements that boxers hadn't seen before. So uh, we can use I saw that. that in, yeah, 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 I was going to say the, your, the tournament. I saw that, your movement in the tournament, the way you're doing the quarter turns and everything. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I know to the average person, but someone that's been involved in the sport, like I was just watching your footwork and your movement and the, the way you were constantly quarter turning. I was like, yeah, it looked very, in my, like, it probably isn't, but it looked very Thai style to me. You know, like when you see someone step out and then try to throw a low yeah, kick or something. Do you know what? That, that, it's funny you said that because <laughs> I spent like, so I worked in London for a couple of years. Right. Um, Worked down in in Salona, trained with a gym down there, um, and and they took me in with open hands. So I was still oh, fighting exactly. kickboxing above waist kickboxing, yeah. but they were tie boxers. Okay. So when we used to spar, I used to do low kicks, but the, we weren't clint. So the right. the yeah. um, the understanding we got to was like, I will come and spar. There has to be a give and take. Like sure. they have to give up some of their rule set. I have to give up some of mine. So we used Fair to do low kick, and yeah. that was it. No knees, no elbows, no okay. no clinch work because yeah. I couldn't do that. Um, I learned loads of them guys, loads. And I learned, we used to do some, I used to learn some of the clinching off them 
use oh, some of that, some it. of the turns and stuff. Yeah, it's like yeah. take it all from end. Like if it works for someone, it works. why not use it for me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So hundred yeah, percent. I think be- because you've come from that background, you can understand. I clocked it. I, I was watching away. tournament straight away, and I was like, "You like." It's kind of like saying, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off subject a bit now, right? But like, I was having a conversation. Like, I got to everyone knows who Sanchai is, yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was, I was, I was with, I, was, I saw Sanchai's interview that he did. This was years and years ago. This is like before Sanchai became Sanchai. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, your style's very, very different. Um, um, like, where do you? Because his movement isn't traditionally yeah. tires it. And he's like Muhammad Ali. Muhammad, he wants okay. to be like Muhammad Ali, like yeah. that sort of footwork that he was yeah, doing, yeah, the way yeah, he yeah. circles the ring. Forget the cartwheel kick, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the way he moves around. So he gets that from obviously like Muhammad Ali, but like his his movement is very unorthodox for Thai. But when I was watching, like I'm, I was watching that tournament, I was like, you're you're very your footwork is very fast, but it's like you're a reverse quarter turn. And I just remember seeing it, and in my from coming from a Muay Thai and MMA yeah. background, I was like. I was thinking, if this guy, if this guy was fighting Thai, he'd be fight, popping a little low kick yeah, in there yeah, or a little yeah, body kick. Yeah, and then obviously yeah. it wasn't until afterwards I realized that's your background. I was yeah. like, it's sick. It yeah. was like, it was it's really mad. nice it's to mad, watch, but man. Do you know what? Your that, box, get, this isn't saying your, hand, your hands. I was focusing on your hands, but just just that footwork, I, was, yeah. I just fell in love with them. Do you know what? That was one thing. I was, obviously, I was like highly underestimated yeah. throughout the whole of, whole of that. But we knew, like, only what I was capable of and we knew what we could do. I spent the whole of lockdown this is what people don't understand. Like I spent the whole of, I went to turn pro into boxing in 2019. I rang my man, well, my coach rang my manager, um, PJ and said, look, I've got another lad. I want to turn in pro. Let's start the proceedings. Obviously lockdown came in 2020. So I'd already started it. I was the last person to get interviewed for my boxing license before they said like, it was literally like the Monday they were like done. I interviewed on the Saturday before. So I was like, great. I don't know when I'm going to box now. Luckily, because I had that interview, I was classed as a professional boxer. Even though my license hadn't come through, I could class myself as a professional. Um, so I, I just my, my, I rang my coach. I said, we can't get in the gym. I come to my house and we just go in the garage and we just start working. We started working. The whole idea was not to change my style. Like we didn't want to rip it up and start again for boxing. It was, let's just make a few tweaks, make a few adaptions where I can't sit a bit lower because I'm worried about a kick. I, I can do that now where that distance, where I'm like, I'm out of range of a punch, I wasn't out of range of a kick. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm always, I was always half a step out of where I needed to be yeah. because you're always worried about that kick coming back. Yeah. So obviously I, we started working on those adaptions and then a few lads started, obviously when boxing started to come back into um, the closed closed shows, you know, behind, behind closed doors, I was sparring quite a few lads there, um, quite like all, all, over, all over the Midlands. Um, and that's when I started to work on it. So I spent a whole year working and trying to perfect a style that worked for me. And it has. And that, that and also we're going to continue to work. Of course, yeah. of course. But yeah, I just, I'll be honest with you. Like that's, that's what stood out for me out of anything I've seen. But um, it's, it's really, it's really good to, good to see. But we'll come into that in a second. Because yeah. I was going to, I just, I was, I'm really intrigued. Like I was saying to, I was saying to Manny here. Manny's like, I like obviously he's, he's watched obviously yeah. your show, like your fight and stuff. And he's like, oh, okay, so like thinking you've come from a typical, like you hear, I, I've had fighters on here before and their stories are very, everyone's, every fighter's story is quite similar-ish, where they've had it, but yours is the complete Tough opposite. the other way around. Yours yeah, is the complete yeah, yeah, opposite. Yeah. So I'm really like intrigued. Yeah. I'm really like inspired, box. <laughs> inspired to hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Because box. You're, you're saying you obviously kick, you fell in love with kickboxing yeah. as a kid, which is understandable. Yeah, we, all, yeah. we all have a sport. You have kids that fall in love yeah. with football and, yeah. and, and whatnot. You had your love of kickboxing. And then obviously you're, you're, you're saying your dad gave you that ultimatum. If you don't work hard enough, he's pulling you out, yep. which is, which, you know, fair play and fair play to him. But you're edu- like, no, like, no, offense. I'm not educated. I don't have any qualifications because I, I fell in love with the sport. And yep. I said, and I had the backing of my dad, to be fair. And I, this is what I say. And like, I've said it many times. I'm, I'm really blessed to have a dad like who I've had because as soon as I pull myself out of school, <laughs> which isn't, I don't recommend this to anyone, but yeah, as soon as I pull myself out of school, he's there, all right, if you're going to do that, you've got to make it 100%, you've got to make yeah, it work yeah. and work yeah. it while, work, make it worth your while. So I had to get myself a job at the time, but yours is the opposite. You, you're educated and you're successful. You've got yourself a career outside of the sport. So like, where, talk to me about that and like why, why you went down, I know why you went down the education route because of what your dad was saying, but what did you have a did you have that mindset as a teenager at the time thinking i'm gonna make it like this or was it 
mm, kind of in the background, yeah. clouded with the typical yeah. Indian Mitzvah education. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting because like I'd never. It was only like recently, probably when I started doing more interviews and podcasts, and when I really like thought about all, all of that. Because at the time, you just sort of just go through life and you just do whatever. You just crack, yeah, crack on in it. So when I've thought about it, but like one thing. I've started to say is like my dad did pull me out of school or uh, did pull me out of kickboxing so I was I think I was 16 yeah I did my first year of GCSEs yeah. um and didn't do so well. I didn't fail but I didn't do so well as what I didn't get the grades I was pretty I was like one or two off getting a few A's and, a, and a, got a, like basically got B's and C's and stuff and he that's wasn't really happy good. yeah it was <laughs> yeah, really good but he was like, like because I was names. having a lot of tuition and stuff like yeah. I was getting supported like on that side of it as well so obviously he wanted like good grades. So he pulled me out of of of, of um, kickboxing, yeah. and it was probably I was yeah sixteen. It was probably worst year of my life going into my second year of GCSEs. All I did was like, all right, can't kickbox. I've got to sit upstairs in my room. Come back from school. The time when I was supposed to be in the gym or would be in the gym, I was studying. That was the most time I was most fidgety. Most like even now when I'm not training and the time when we gym, you're like. Oh, I'm basically yeah. like a crackhead. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, itching. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, yeah. walk, I'm walk, like, even when I'm not allowed in the gym now after a fight, I'm taking some time off. I'm walking around the house. Mom's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I can't sit down. Like, yeah. I'm just active. Because when you use, your body gets used to being active during those times. So, I, yeah, so my dad pulled me out and my grades did get a little bit better, but not as good as what they should be. But my mood at home and in myself was like rock bottom. Like I was miserable. I was shouty. I wasn't the I wasn't the same Dylan that was like a, like a year ago. Um, went through that year, passed my GCSEs, done all right, done, done you know, done done okay, um, and then started A levels. And my dad was like, "Yeah, just go go back to it now. It's major miserable. Just go back to it." And then within three months, Uncle got me a fart, and and do you know what? My grades got better, my my like my well being got better, and um, obviously I was doing better at kickboxing as well. So. I just, you know, everything sort of just started to fall into place. And, and that was when m my dad and uh, probably my, my parents realized, like, this is actually good for him. Like, it's, it's good for him. Like, it, it helps me. And this is one thing I always say to parents is, like, it helps the child keep focused because they can't always be, like, always on one thing. You've got to have somewhere where it's going to be a bit, of a, a bit of a switch off. Like, you need that switch off. Everyone needs that switch off, you know. Um, even, like, when I used to finish work, I used to come home and I used to have half an hour just sit there, front of the TV, relax. If I wanted a coffee, have a coffee or whatever, just relax, switch off from my job. Yeah. I'm sitting in a car, driving home, switch off, get up, go to gym. That half an hour was my mental, like, switch off to go focused onto the gym. So everyone everyone needs that. And that's one thing that I've always said is, like, don't pull them out. 100%. That's a, that's a fine example. Like, I was, uh, some of these podcasts, you always hear me talk about mental health, but you've just hit the nail on the head there. Like, I know you're only a teenager at yeah. the time doing A-levels, but you just said it improved your mental health as well as physical health. Yeah. Your grades were getting better. Your education side of things was getting better. And on top of that, your kickboxing was getting even better. Yeah. And that's why, like, I I always say that I, I've got, like, Thug Rose says it in the UFC, but I, I, I kind of, like, stand by it. Um... Every, if everyone did martial arts or some form of combat sport in the world, the world would be a much better place we live yeah. in right now because people don't understand the mental positive effect it has on 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 you. Um, and you've just hit the nail on the head there, and you've just let yeah. the audience know like how much it changed your mind. Uh, it has, and do you know what? Like kickboxing or training in martial arts at a young age, I believe has made me tougher. So do you know when people say like? How do you just diet all the time? How do you just not go out and like you? I can go out to a party and not drink. I can go out. I can go out to a restaurant and not eat. Like, how do you do all that? So I don't like. I don't know why. It's just been instilled in me. That discipline's in me from a young age, and I think that's like that's massively important because some people like you see a lot of people like come on and then they fall off the wagon and they come out like they haven't got that discipline to keep it up, and you know it and it and it doesn't happen overnight. You can't just change like that. Like it does take years to work on it, but you have to work. You have to recognize that you want to work on it. You have to recognize that you want to be better. And honestly, and you, you'll back me on this, walking into a gym is the best thing. 100%. I say to anyone, 100%. you don't have to walk into a gym become, to become a world champion or to become a professional athlete or a professional fighter. Yeah. You can walk in the gym to train every day. 
depth. And yeah. just love training, love hitting the pads. You don't even have to spar. You can love just coming and just doing whatever you want to do. Hitting in the, the pads gym. is the best therapy ever. Hundred percent. Hitting pads is the best therapy ever. And you'll probably feel like it's the most knackering thing in the world yeah. for those twenty <laughs> minutes that you're hitting the pads. Yeah. But you've come out thinking, yeah, like you're more relaxed. I've not hit pads yet, and I'm, I won't tell you because you'll be like, what? I've not hit pads for about a good six months. And a couple of weeks ago, you know, I put it on my Instagram, uh, Mac, one of my coach, like one of my, he's actually one of my fighters. I, was, okay. I used to train him as a kid. He now coaches some of the classes. Yeah. Okay. He, I said, hold a pad for me for a round. I just really, you know, when you just didn't, and how he held it for me. And it's like riding a bike. Yeah. You know, obviously you're not going to be always as crisp and as sharp. And you're right now probably in, in your peak right now where you're like pop, 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 yeah. pop, pop, pop. But it's like riding a bike. If you ever come away from it, when you come back to it, it's like you're not as crisp and sharp, but no. it's you're not fatigued either. You're not tired. It's just like, bah, 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 you know. And then you walk out of it thinking like, I felt yeah, like I needed that. I, I, like I, I did a three that. minute round, three yeah. minutes. And that three minutes was amazing. For me, I was at the end of it, I was dead. But at yeah. three minutes at the end of it, I was like, ah, all the stress I had on in my day and everything all went away. Yeah. Afterwards, I felt like 100 kilograms had been lifted off my back because yeah. of all the pressures I had in that day. But that three minutes, Help me. You you don't and understand so, that. Whatever whatever you have on your mind walking into the gym, walking yeah. into the ring to do pads, like it all as soon as you start hitting pads, it all goes. 100%. You forget about everything. Like Literally. the world doesn't exist. The people in the gym don't exist. All you think about is just hitting the pads. Yeah. And that's Definitely. the crazy thing, like it's mad. Do you know what? Yeah, mad. that is it's, it's a mad it's thing cool. to think. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. why like I really for me now, like I, I I coach a lot of the kids here now, and I just want to get as many as I can in because Similar to what you just said, it's going to help them so much. Then it's not to be the world next world yeah. champion. It's just general life. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's going to help yeah. them. Like, I've, that's why people say, "How do you teach three-year-old kids?" Do you know what I mean? But I'm just doing it now, just to teach them the fundamentals to set them up. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And, and yeah. like that's 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 I think is so important. It's so so important, and you're a fine example of that. But yeah, going so you went into A levels, started educating, started kickboxing, and then like where did it all? And then from? and then yeah, and it just sort of like I never really had it on my mind that I wanted to be a wolf. Like you know, as, as it started to get better, obviously I was like a dream was going to be I wanted to become a professional world champion. Well, I wanted to become a world champion, whether that was a junior or whether that was as a as an adult. Um, I, like that was just a dream. Um, and then. I went off to uni, um, obviously lived at university lifestyle for a bit, had where, one amateur fight. I went to Lancaster, Lan oh, which is oh, like oh. right, right, up, yeah, right out the way. I wanted to like... That's different, man. Cut, <laughs> cut, cut it short, I wanted to move away from home and just like nice. get live my life and get some experiences outside of living, like living in a in a house where like mom does everything for you, Bibi takes you everywhere, dad and Baba, like everyone looks after you. I wanted to get away from that and do that all for myself. I remember ringing my mom, yeah, on the first week. I was like, mom, like, I've got some pasta here. Like, do you put it, like, do you boil it? Like, how, how do you cut the pasta? How do you cut the, I didn't know. How, how do I wash my clothes? Like, honestly, I didn't know what to do. So I had to, I learned a lot. And you know, it, it, Best like, experiences of it. Like. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So I, I went off and it wasn't like, I was always, tra I was trained up there. Um, okay. Went and did kickboxing up there. Um. But then I actually fell in love with boxing. I, like I really got on with the boxing coach. He was similar t mindset and similar personality to my coaches at home. Okay. So I was like, I just fell in love with him and it and boxing. Yeah. Um, and and that was it. And then just just trained boxing and kickboxing was was sort of like a myth. I used to come back. Used to come back on the weekends when the lads were fighting and support the lads or help corner when yeah. they need to. Um, but that was that was it really. Um, and it wasn't only until I finished uni where I was like. I, st I started fighting for titles. Uncle was like, "Do you want to do you want to crack on and keep like Do you want to get more fights?" I was like, "Yeah, fine." This is in kickboxing. This yeah? is in kickboxing, okay. and um, Uncle got me a Midlands era title fight against experienced lads. I knocked him out in the third round. Then moved on. He was like, "Do you want to move on?" I was like, "Yeah." Get me in English. Knocked him out in the third round or fourth, third, yeah, third round. He was he was the current champion. And when you were knocking these opponents out. Boxing knockouts uh, or kicks or majority that? majority by the hands. The English hands. title lad, I I stopped him with a kick, but majority of them were with my hands because no. of the amateur boxing. So that's and that's where I found I realised like, I've got, I've I've got, got decent power hands. actually. Yeah. I've got fast hands. I've got fast feet and I've got decent power. I just need to make sure I keep kicking to kick the kick count or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So and then I just started knocking out these guys and then I got to European level and I was like. All right, fine. We're here now. And then Uncle's like, "Yeah, do you want to fight for a world title? We've been offered a world title against the next a former world champion." 
I was like, yeah, man, like, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. And I ended up knocking him out in the fourth round. We went down to Milton Keynes um, okay. and fought at an ice rink in Milton Keynes. I took, like, took a couple hundred people down there. Uh, yeah, it took, like, took loads down there. Like, I was probably the biggest ticket seller on the show, actually. And I wasn't even local. Um, knocked him out in the fourth round. And that was it then. It went into two. It erupted. That's when we had four Dullies, Dullies walk me out. Like, we had like, a big entrance for it as well. Um, and that was that was like that was a moment where I was like, yeah, like this is what I wanted. This is what you know, like all that time that you work all them years for. You never like I never knew I was gonna get there. Even in training camp, it, I wasn't even thinking about all that dreams that I had that night because you're just so focused on camp. When I got there and I was walking around, you like, you take it all in after because you walk around the ring, you look around, you like soak it all in, and that's when you think, yeah, like this is job it. well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you and you did all that. Becoming world champion in kickboxing whilst working full time, mm -hmm. whilst getting a degree, mm -hmm. getting a degree at university mm -hmm. and all of that. Like, what what was it? What work did you do as a full time career? So after I finished uni, um, I went to work for BP as a business analyst. Okay. So that's what I did. My degree in was business analytics consulting. So I wanted to become a consultant, like work for one of the big four consulting firms. Like that was my dream. Work down in London. Um, that that was one of my dreams. <laughs> that goes longer now. Went to work for BP I, and I lived down in London for two years. Lived in Slough with, with my uh, short and nanny and nana down there. Um, so I li lived down there for two years and that's when I did Thai boxing and yeah. Oh, this that, the that gym, was, gym. Uh, this, this, yeah. That, so I trained. What gym was that? Oh, a Karl Mo Muay Thai, what they're called. So you yeah, got. Yeah, so that was. Uh, Suk and South. Suk, yeah. So yeah, you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be small words. So I used to, there used to be a lad. Uh, that a few the go pal, go pal, yeah. Go. He, he went to Cov Uni, yeah, and he used to, I used yeah. to train him here. Yeah, do you know what? Oh my god, I remember he was speaking about, yeah, he, used he to really me. he goes, Oh, do you know Pindi? I was like, Nah, nah. I don't because I never used to train in Cov, I never used to know, like, yeah. I never used to know much about, like, the, the oh no, they didn't do tie boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember now you reminded me, yeah, 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 yeah. He just yeah. got married recently, I saw him, yeah, he back. did, uh, a few weeks uh, about a month, a month ago, ago yeah. yeah, man, and he is, he is good, man, like, he is, he is. Such a, from a Muay Thai point of view, not maybe kickboxing or boxing, but he had such a slick style I'll of I'll tell power. you what, if you saw some of the spars we had on Tuesday, really? me and Gopal, man, we used to We'd go, go for it. it. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I yeah. can imagine. He was slick. I he remember was... walking out of there thinking, damn, my legs are battered. Bat yeah, he's good. He's yeah. good, man. I really mean, technical. Sort of fights, man. Had a really like, really technical style. Yeah. Relaxed and technical yeah. style. Like, you really, poker face. Like, yeah. You it's couldn't there. tell anything. Yeah, yeah. really good, good lad. Top lad, good. top lad, top lad. Top lad, man. Chad, go pal. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah no, 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 I know. I remember that gym. Yeah, Sox was, was, he's really good as well, yeah. man. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's good. And so you, so you you've made so, it. You've made it in your career. BP, yeah. you've done it yeah. all. Like you're you're in London, living it living it up in the plight. Yeah, saying yeah. it. And then what changes? What so, and why? Did, why yeah. does it change? Because do you know what? From a yeah. like sorry to interrupt, but like from. I can understand it because I've kind of I can I get it I get that the 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 not the fire in your belly type of yeah. thing. But a lot of guys and girls out there that are probably listen to this thing, well, that's what we worked our childhood for is a career. So why would you give it up? Like, what's the? Do you understand what I mean? Like, and I have literally yeah. like obviously I went to university to to study a degree to then work in that like work in that profession after. Um, I, I finished two years at BP and I was like I wasn't really happy with the work that I was doing. So I ended up moving back home um, and, and just looking for a job, finding a job. I did find a job working for a cash and carry up in Manchester then. <laughs> about about like six months later, I ended up working up in Manchester. So, I, But I was commuting every day. I had a company car, so I was driving up every day and coming, coming home every day um, because of the gym. Um, so I ended up, I ended up doing, falling in love with that, but like it was 2019 um, and I said to my coaches, I said to, we sit down at the start of every year and they were like, yeah. what's your goal? Oh, that's what, really what's, good. What's that's... your goal? What's your ambition? What do you want to get out of this year? Yeah. And, in, and it was 2019, sat down with the promoter Gavin Burroughs at the time as well. Um, and I was like, just, I was already a world champion. I was like, just get me world titles, like. Just, yeah, I just want to fight, fight for Keep more. Kickboxing, this Keep is boxing, yeah, 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 just twelve round fights. Just, just give me them all. Um, so I ended up fighting four twelve round fights in a year. So every three months, I was fighting a twelve rounder. Nice. Lost my first, lost the first one of the year. Um, a close decision. It is what it is. You, you live and learn. Um, probably got right hand happy as they call it. When you just fall in love with your power and you think you can, 
Yeah, just, just not, yeah. And my mindset was like, I learned because my mindset was, I'm going to go in there and knock him out. Not going there to win. The mindset now is going there to win. By any means necessary, we're going there to win. That was, I'm going there to knock him out. And I didn't knock him out and I lost. Yeah. I learned. And then ended up fighting three more times and, and winning twice and, and losing one more. But, you know, that was that was a goal. It was just get the big and best fights. Like, I knew that was it. And then I already, already made my decision that I wanted to give boxing a go. Um, and then I turned pro in boxing, obviously, as like I said, in, in probably 2020. Um, I didn't actually make my debut till last October. So 2021, October 21 is when I made my debut. Um, but I was still working up in Manchester. So... Was on that debut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, up until the tournament, I was still working in Manchester. This is what, yeah. like, no one really... So it's not really, like... So my social media is all about fighting and myself. Like, I didn't used to put work. It's only, yeah. like, when I started speaking about it a little bit, people started to understand. But my day used to be um, wake up at half five, wake up at five, get on the road for half five, two-hour drive to Manchester, do half a day's worth of work, um do a lunchtime session, go go across the road to a pure gym and just do a, an hour cardio, um, finish, shower up, eat, half a day's work, drive two hours, leave at half four, two hours to the gym, half six, train till about half eight, nine o'clock, get home for half nine, quarter to ten, um, eat, shower, prep my food for the next day, sleep, do it all over again. That was Monday to Friday and I did that consistently yeah, <laughs> I, I, I did. I did that consistent, and I was training like I was training like a professional athlete, mm. but working like in a professional uh, as a career yeah. in a career as well. So um, when I think about it now, I'm thinking like oh, man, I couldn't wait. I couldn't do them hours now. Like mad. But I used to I used to do all that, and then after a fight, I used to have a week off. In that week off, I used to stay at work till like half eight. Not well, you stay at work till half seven, eight o'clock, and leave late because I had that much work to do that I needed to leave late. So I used to do extra work afterwards. So I was still doing them hours anyway. Yeah. Um, and then, and then yeah, and then fought twice October, then fought in December, got two wins. Come the new year, um, I was training for a fight actually in April anyway. Um, and it probably was like February, mid-February time, I got a phone call. I seen Sky announced that they were doing a show at the Sky Dome. And I saw it was a tournament. And I rang my manager, I was like, yo, like, can I get on this show? Is just as just a stop gap, like as just one of those fighters. Do you know when they get an early knockout, they need to put a fight to fill a gap on TV? I'll be one of those fighters. Like I still sell a load of tickets because it's my hometown. I've never fought in Coventry before. He was like, fine. Two about two weeks later, I didn't really hear much. Two weeks later, um, I get a phone call saying, "Oh, by the way, one of my coaches, Richard Walla, he goes, he's just accepted that you're gonna fight in the tournament." I was like, "Shit, okay." <laughs> All right, yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. I was in Liverpool at an ex yeah. expo then. I was like, fine. So I left early from the expo on the Friday, went down to the gym and that was it. We put a plan together and to win the tournament and then yeah. that was it. We stuck to the plan. I was still working in Manchester. The week the week of the fight, luckily the company I was working for, they, um, they, they sponsored me for that fight. So they gave me time. They gave me some money, but they also gave me time as well, which is what I needed. So Fridays I was working from home which gave me that little bit more recovery um, and ability to train in the day where I could. Um, and also the week of the fight, they let me work from home from Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. I had Friday off anyway, but I worked from home Wednesday and Thursday. So I still had, still worked, still had to still, travel, but yeah. I still had a little bit like, a little bit of Leniency, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... So I was, I was looking for that. Um, and, and yeah, and then obviously that night, it is what it is. It literally changed my career. No one, no one, no one heard of me before. All the all the crazy things that I did in kickboxing, world champion at twenty one, didn't really get known. My big, I, I, un, I, I went for a unification fight. Like you don't really get like two organisations come together to put to to unify for a world title. I I was one of those um, for a lad called Kasim Kasim Beg. Um, I remember watching him as a kid. I was like 13, 14, and he was fighting professionally for English and British titles when I was a kid. I then fought him all these years later. I lost on the decision, but it was a good, it was a good fight. It was a good, it was a good scrap. Um, so yeah, and then, and then that that was that was that life that day that night changed my career, man, like big time. And that was when you know, luckily for me. It's when I made the decision. I sat down with my parents and said, look, I'm going to 
I'm gonna gonna do this full time now. Um, actually, I didn't need to say. It. My dad rang me one day. He was at the shop. I was on the way to Godola, and he said, "Just do it. Like I'll back you. Just do it. Like you re- want a lifetime that opportunity. Is- he goes, do it." Wow. And I was like, "Nah, nah, 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 nah. Let me think. Let me think about it. Because I didn't want to give so, up work. Really? No. Cause, yeah. Because yes. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like. I've got that, it, It's a whole why? financial security, isn't it? M- more so for financial than, than yeah. Enjoying. I, I didn't. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to be known as one of them that's lived off mom and dad. That's course, always course, like no. said. Oh, you've only done it because mom and dad give you loads of money. Yeah. I didn't want to be one. I wanted to do it for myself. So I wanted to make sure that I was set up. So I rang my coach. I was like, "Yo, like, let's get some sponsors on board. Let Let's do this properly now." And then they, we all just basically just came to an agreement, and we just, and I just handed my notice in, gave it work, and um. <laughs> the rest wow, is history it's crazy because yeah. I, I haven't really looked back since then of course yeah you've just been full throttle forward yeah. ever since then like like again I've, i don't know you very well up until today but seeing seeing that tournament for me like i'll be honest my experience of watching that tournament is like a, i was from a punjabi sikh point of view i was, I was proud anyway yeah. but just from your history like of what, of what you experienced, it's just even more inspiring to hear it. and that's why like like not I, I know probably before this podcast goes out, not a lot of people know of everything you've had to go through yeah. um in terms of working. And you've not even mentioned once about the family business. Do you got know what I mean? <laughs> I know on top of oh, that. Yeah, yeah, do you got know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, on, on top yeah. of that, when when you think you've got a bit of free time, which is your weekend, yeah. you don't have free time. No, no, no. Like I used to go down to the shop and just like help out here and there. Like obviously when I'm training for a fight, I never used to work yeah. um in the shop. I used to have a regular Saturday shift where we used to just not pay one of the lads. I used to just, I don't know if you don't get paid, but go in there Standard. and just, just graft my ass off for like yeah. 10 hours. Obviously that stopped um, and, and dad got one of the lads to work, but I go in and help out here and there where, where, yeah. when, when I can, obviously when I'm, when I've got, when I'm not training and stuff, yeah. but um, obviously the family business, like at, at the end of the day, this is the way I say it, like at the end of the day, the family business put clothes on my back. It's allowed 100%. me to live the, like a comfortable lifestyle. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's give us everything that, you know, me and my family have wanted and dreamed of and everything. So, I can't neglect that. I can't forget forget about yeah. that. So, you know, and everyone's at the shop as well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. when I'm at home, no one's at home. They're all at the shop. So, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I want to go see it, I have to go, have to, to, the go shop. to the shop. What happens when you go to the shop? You end up jumping on the till and helping out for a bit. Yeah. Oh, they just had a delivery come in. Oh, can you help us move these pallets <laughs> and move these things? Just like, it is, it is what it you is, isn't it? In. It is what it you is. But you, I don't I, like. I don't mind. At the end of the day, it's it's allowed me to live the life yeah. that I've got today. So I'm always going to be thankful for that. I'm always, always. going to help help my family out where I can. To be honest, that's brilliant, man. I love I love hearing that. But going back to this tournament, then, yeah. yeah. So you've had this tournament. I'm watching it, and I, I've already told you my experience. So I'm watching it. It's me, and my wife, we sat and surfing. I was like, and I was getting a pop of my like. I was I was twitching. You know, you're talking about that twitch. Yeah. Normally, I'm quite relaxed and chilled watching it. Somehow, I kind of found this. I was like connected to the TV yeah. is the best way I can explain. I don't know. I believe in all this, like, you know, the universe and the energy and yeah. everything. And no, it sounds like really corny and cheese, but watching you fight, I was like, you're not your, tra- in, in the most respectful way, it wasn't a traditional boxing bout yeah. because it was so fast paced. Uh, not saying boxing is slow, but like your movement. And that's what I was talking about. Like catching that yeah. cor- corner yeah. tender, the way he was moving. I was like, You've got to be like, I was thinking this guy's either going to go into tie box or he's done some form of like yeah, kickbox yeah. or something. Like, yeah. I was just thinking that movement is, is slick, yeah. it's nice, man. But like, just, just, I know you said preparing for this tournament, you get that phone call, preparing for this tournament, it's in your hometown. You, you're preparing for it to win, nothing more, nothing yep. less, yep. purely just to win it. Talk us through that camp, talk us through the feelings, the emotions the nervous energy yeah. the adrenaline all of it just talk us through Do you know what experience. it's crazy because like like and you'll know this being a fighter as well to fight on sky sports it's the biggest platform out there for any like no matter what they say you've got, obviously we've got like bt we've got all the other yeah. channels out there but sky's a one man sky's a one it's yeah. the big time in it so yeah. i was like that that sort of like spurred me on but i wasn't really bothered about that like that yeah. was always there like that was like oh that give you that little yeah. bit of excitement and stuff to know you got the big cameras and stuff but it was the focus was it's no point like enjoying all of that and losing yeah. the fight yeah <laughs> you've yeah. given up the opportunity we've got to go in there to win 100%. and we prepared for the three toughest guys um that we thought were in the tournament and we probably had two 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 out of the three mm. um in, in, in that semi-final and the final. Um, so, you know, it, it was mad, but like the whole training camp was built around the free fight experience. So yeah. 
when when we did we did a warm up and we had like a five minute break. So that five minute break, do you know when you've warmed up and they're waiting to announce and you're waiting in the staging area before you do your ring walk? That's the wait. That's a little bit of cool down. So we did that in training as well. Jumped in the ring yeah. and then we did three rounds, minute break, sat down on a stool in between the rounds to get Brilliant. the break. Same instructions, same time that I had for water, they gave me water, did everything exactly the same. As it would be for the yep. yeah. Did the announcement, stayed in the ring for two minutes, announcement, interview, jumped out the ring. Okay, the, the one day I might have only had like a 20 minute break and then a five minute warm up and then the five minutes, a half an hour. Other days I might have had a 50 minute break in between fight one and fight two. That was obviously more respective of how it was on the night because I was fight one on the night and the yeah. first time so I had the longest yeah. wait the in wait. between all the fighters. So we did that literally the week before, a 50 minute break, uh, probably a 10 minute warm up. Just so I know how my body felt after going yeah, through awesome. fast pacing on the pads and then having to cool down. And it's hard, man. Like you okay. can feel like the lap, just so, as soon as your body cools down, we're not designed to go warm up, cool down. Warm, well, our body's designed to warm up, maximum yeah. output, finish. That's it. Relax, recover, do what you need to do. Obviously, then I've got to go up and go again. Um, so we did that. Like did the one fight, had a break. Did the second fight, exactly the same had a break, yeah. did the third fight, and obviously that was the end of the training session, finished off with whatever else, but we did that like three, four times a week in preparation for this tournament. Sparring, exactly the same. So we was like, we weren't taking this lightly. Yeah. On the night, yeah, I believe, believe, believe this as well now. So on the night, my coach, Richard Waller's like the tactician. He's the one that puts like all the, the, the game, game plan together. He sits down timings, this, that, the other. And we was probably about three or four minutes out on the night in terms of, so when I say three or four minutes out, I mean like we had to, we had to wait an extra three minutes because one of the fights went longer than, than expected. Or we had to, you know, we had to finish the warm up a little bit quicker because the fight was a knockout or something. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that was, that's what I'm talking about. But we was spot on on the night. Everything and went to plan. we had all the people come into like all the different Sky producers and people in the, you know, coming to interviews and stuff from, from the different boxer and Sky as well were coming into changing rooms. They were like, you lot are so cool, man. Like calm, collected, all together. Like, I was sat there the whole night, yeah? Just relaxed. Because I was just sat there relaxed. What have I got to worry about? We've done the hard work in the gym. Yep. I trust my coach. I'll say to Walla, Walla, when do I need to start warming up? How long have we got? You guys, you've got about 40 minutes here. You've got about half an hour. Just have a little skip. Warm yourself up. We'll just start slowly. I trusted everything. He said, he said right, you've got 10 minutes. Let's get warm now. You've got five minutes. How do you feel? Yeah. We did this in training camp and we do this on the fight night. This is this how we work. And it all played down to a T and... But we've done that for every fight we've I've I've done in boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just the way we work. We're just like we're just regiment and, and that's and that's how we is, but yeah, and it, and it work and it works for us. It might not work for everyone, but it works for us, do you know what I mean? So and then obviously on the night and then obviously it was just like getting that first knockout. What people didn't realise was I got caught I think I must have threw a punch and he caught me with a punch on my shoulder. I don't know if it was my left it might have been my left one. And I had my masseuse there, John. Um, and he just like warmed me up. Um, you're not allowed to use any oils in boxing. That was the worst thing. You can't, you can't use toil. Like yeah. toil is good, man. You come off yeah. the table, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. you're alive in it. But you got have, you has to be dry massage. So come off and he had some eyes. He was like, I was lying down on this bed. Eyes on my shoulder like this after the first fight. My coaches walked in, they were like, they looked, they didn't want to say anything. They looked they're like, oh, shit. Okay, fine. What are we going to do? Got up after I warmed up and stuff, it loosened off. But that what pain on this, what I don't know, dead, like, like a dead, like, like, a dead. Like, a, like a dead shoulder. Do you know yeah. like where you point your shoulder is, yeah. and you get like you get you get Hit an impact yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it kills. Like, yeah, that's what it felt like. Um, luckily, it was only like a, a quick that's fight, so I didn't have to endure like more true. of that fight in that. Um, and then we just and then it got off the table, warmed up on that, and then we just went again. And that was the crazy thing was. Let's do it. I remember walking out to second fight thinking, right, okay, say my boy Gru first. Yeah. First and foremost, so, because you know, God looks after us, protects us. 100%. Um, and let's go out and get this job done. And my mindset was, go out and get the job done. Wait. Go out and get the win. Win the first fight. I Which can't is, win the tournament without winning one, two, three. Yeah, of course. So I've got to win the first fight. Yeah. And I've got to put everything into winning that first fight. Whether it emptied my tank or not, 
You've got to win the yeah, fight. You've got to win it. the fight. Yeah. So win the fight. Second fight. Closer fight. Obviously, um, Malvin also a bit more of a boxer. Had obviously a GB boxing background. I've come from a, a bit more of a, a rougher background. And that's what I needed to do. And, you know, wouldn't probably nick the first round. Went out and probably tried to box him and got out boxing the second round. Hold my hands up. Lost the round. I already knew. Sat down in the corner and there wasn't a lot of instruction other than breathe and recover. And my coach and my coach said to me, said, like, I was like, I know what I need to do. I, I know I need to go out there and just stick it on him. And throughout that like, final round, I picked up the pace. I picked up the pace. I had more moments and he had moments of success. And that's what paid off. And then the last 30 seconds, I just went, for, I think I caught him with a punch and rocked him and he fell back on the ropes. Probably another 20, 30 seconds. I probably could have stopped him, but the bell went and I, I knew I'd got the decision. I yeah. knew it was close, but I knew I'd got the decision. When, when you said in between that round where you said to your coach, you know, you've got to stick it on him. Now, in my terms, that's like being in their face and really like, from yeah. a Muay Thai point of view, yeah. being in their face, absorbing a shot yeah. and going for it. Does that make sense? Is that what it, you it, mean? It, it, was it, that, it wasn't. Was that your mindset? That, that, it, that was sort of the, that was, that wasn't sort of, so it was like, Every time he lands or punches, I need to throw two or three. He wants one, I need to throw three. He lands two, I need to throw five or six. That was it. So if you ever see me throw in that final round, it was like he trying to land and I was like, boom, 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 boom. And it, the whole thing was, it wasn't supposed to be hard. Like, obviously you want to punch hard as you can, but you've got to throw fast and you've got to connect. And it was score the points and win the fight. And that's what paid off. And then it paid dividends and the body work early on in round one, that paid off as well in the final round because that's when it pays off. Don't, like, this is the thing about body shots. People say they, they pay off later on and they do. They don't, it, they, they might not be phased by the body shot in round one. Yeah. But come round three or round 10, you know they're feeling it. Yeah. They're struggling to breathe. That's when it pays off. So it, and it paid off in that fight. So that, that, was, that was the mindset behind that, that final round come back and, and we thought we, we knew obviously the side of the draw that I had was probably the, the tougher side Cholton came through he had a tough quarter final people thought he probably lost it it was close I didn't really watch that then that fight back but it was close obviously stopped Cooper um when I say stopped him he didn't like knock him out like how I stopped Otis yeah he sort of just mauled him to full I think the pressure got too much for Cooper and he, and he, and he just uh, ended yeah, up yeah yeah what uh, quitting yeah. uh, basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and and just flopped to the floor so then we knew that we were like right okay we didn't get some camera i'm gutted man because we got a cameraman that follows me around the whole night and okay. just for behind the scenes like yeah. for my own like yeah like 20 years down the time uh, that's you want to look back my footage, it. yeah, yeah 100%. Cool, cool. and he didn't capture this bit but like my coach said you like put your back on the we were sat we was in like the big changing room so we had like it was like another bar for the a sky right. dome so it was like another bar but they okay. closed it off from my changing room okay he goes put you back to a bar he goes start rolling so i started rolling started moving slipping shots then he started throwing shots and he started swinging he's like right now start throwing counters back roll counter roll counter block bang, boop, 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 boop. now I'll step off he goes that's exactly what it's going to be like he said when you're on the ropes you don't stop moving your head when you move you need to keep moving but you need to keep yourself on the ropes as less time as possible. As soon as you stop on the ropes, that's his chance to work. If you give him that chance to work, you're going to lose a fight. If you don't and you keep turning your feet, you keep twisting, it's going to be hard, but you need to just keep yourself moving. Land your shot and get it gone. Land your shot and get it gone. And it was difficult because he came, oh, he just ran at me, man, the first round, didn't he? So, but I, I expected that and that's when that's when we started moving and I found my rhythm as a round when I found my rhythm and, and it paid off, man. 100% it paid off. And then that was it. History made. History made. Yeah. Life's, yeah. Life changed. Yeah. And I think Literally. that was the biggest, that was like one of the that biggest going. shows that they've ever done. Yeah. But like not ever because done, but like. We, we felt that, like someone from the outside, I felt that because I, normally I just watch boxing and it's, you could hear the, you know, you can hear a crowd and it's yeah. like, you could tell when a show's a bit dead. Yeah. You can show when a show's live. This show was live, yeah. like lively. It was like, that's what I was saying when I was watching it. I wasn't sit, normally I sit back and relax on my sofa and watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You twill on your phone. Yeah. And watch it and yeah. This was like this. I was like yeah. this. I was like, <laughs> do you get what I mean? You're like, you're in the zone of it. And it's like, yeah. when you when you got that final, when that final bow went and the announcements got made, it was like, wow. And then just, it was just, for me, I was just, it was just you like, know what? so it's, inspiring oh, to watch. So, so like, inspiring. It's crazy. I watched that video back so many times because it's like, that was a moment when 
all that. So my coach, Simon, said something to me um, before the final fight. He said, this is it. 15 years of hard work in martial arts has come down to, my my language, fucking three rounds. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. That's 15 it. 15 years of hard work. How much can you comes put? Comes down to these next 10 minutes uh, almost. Exactly. And that was it. That I was it. That, that was the moment I thought, okay, just give everything. Like I had nothing left in my tank, yeah. I'll be honest. In that final round, he was he was pushing that last 10 seconds. I'd just give everything I had. Nice. And I was tired, but I had nothing more to give. That's fine. There was no, the fight was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when yeah, you yeah, walk yeah. out of a fight, you want to give everything. Yeah, and course, I gave course. everything. I Wicked. emptied my tank in that. And that's the that best, that's the best way to do it. Because you never want to look back thinking, what if? Yeah. What if I just, do you got me in and you emptied it and it's brilliant. And that's it's, it. And it was like, and it, it was just, I remember watching back and it was like looking, um, obviously I turned around, jumped on my coach. We were jumping around. It was like, uncle man, get in the ring. Uncle got in the ring. The Dudley's Pavan Matu started playing the drums and that was it, man. He started doing Bhangra and that's it. Like, but he's done that before. Like, yeah, he, he always the kickbox, he yeah, yeah. loves it. He, he, like, even with my kickboxing, kickboxing entrances, he used to be in the ring dancing before I used to walk out. Like, he loves it. He absolutely <laughs> loves play, it. Play. So it was only right to get Uncle in the ring and just to and show off. Yeah. But not just show off who we are, showcase off us as a community. Like, yeah. this is what we can bring. 100%. This is, this is our people. We're here to represent. And Definitely. And I think we did, man. Like, we Absolutely. did. Absolutely. This is what I'm saying because it stood out for me straight away. When that happened, I was like, wow it just stood out straight away yeah. and the fact that like we we touched upon it before we went live but like the whole tell tell the audience like how it how it all started with having the just that experience because yeah. it, it, well, nothing was planned but like just explain to everyone like, no, so how, like, like first first off i must say it was unfortunate so that when i got the phone call to say um i can I, I'm, I'm in the tournament yeah. i said to my manager what about my drummers he said, I've already done it. I've already got them sorted. Good. Sky were back in that. I didn't think they would, I, I yeah. didn't think they would be for it because they're like, the, everything's got to be for the TV. It's got to yeah. look right for the TV, but they backed it. 100%. They really did. They were like happy for it. So they made it like a whole big announcement that they used on Fight Week and stuff. So we had my, like Pav came down to the, um, do you know when Gym. they did the draw? Yeah. They, so they drawed us out on the Thursday as the press conference type okay. event. So they drawed us out and when I got drawn out, but I've blasted the door, man. And they've never done that before. Wicked. And it created such an atmosphere. That Wicked. created, he, he opened up on Sky Sports Live, playing the door. No. Nice. Closed out on the door as well. No. Nice. And then did that. So that's never been seen before. So that was big. So I'm lucky Sky backed that. Um, and then and then on the night, it was, I was in the ring after the final fight. Obviously, I, I said, Jack the foot there, like, yeah. all through the night. And, and obviously saying, why would you like, Blessed, Always. man. Blessed, yeah, big time. But 100%. we're working on the next fight. And I said all these little phrases like throughout the throughout the throughout the night in the interviews and stuff. And the final fight was done. Um, and there was these two lads on the ring book. They were holding two flags, uh, Kunda flags, as I was walking out. And I seen them all through the night or whatever. Um, and they, it was like it just sort of went quiet because they were interviewed. Like I think Ben Shallon was getting interviewed. Um, obviously talking about the, the event and they turned around I stood next to them and I was like they're going to turn to me and ask me to speak now and these lads were like go take the flag take the flag take the flag in that instant something just happened I just legged it out of the ring grabbed it off them and said boy save give him a little spud and then ju jump back in the ring and just put it over my shoulder for, for that moment after that fight, and then and then what happened was I had a final interview, so I did some more interviews. This is afterwards, wasn't it? When you sat down, when, yeah. when I was done, and then I sat down up on the stage um, for the yeah. final interview as they closed out, and I put the I didn't know what to do because I had the chance I'd win me. I didn't want to yeah. put it over because you can't You've really see that, what yeah. it was going to do. So I thought, okay, I'll put it on my laps. Yeah, um, I, I couldn't just hold it out like this. <laughs> yeah, you just, like I just it, just it wouldn't look right. So I just put it on my laps, and I thought the Respect. camera can pick that up, and it did. Um, and obviously did the interview and, and just spoke about it and then and that was it and then that moment I think that image went viral 100% um, that went viral over India Canada America Australia Europe like literally went everywhere, everywhere. And I was like everywhere. shocked man everywhere then, that, the, the, that image two images that one and the one where you walk in in the ring after it was like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah those yeah. two images that, they, yeah. that, that's, that went viral they Mad. went viral and like Thing is, I didn't realize I, my phone turns off. Like you, as you all know, yeah. you turn your phone off the, the day of the fight. I turn my phone off. Do not disturb. Them, just just leave it. Yeah. Um, only phones that come through from mum, dad, and Bibi and Baba and Judge and Judge. That's it. Like six people done. Um, mum rings my best mate, so I spoke to my mum after the fight anyway, and uh, 
um, I didn't realize how big it was. So I went, we normally like book a bar for a so I can meet like family like afterwards because they kick you out of the venue straight away. So we went and met them and they were like, you're blowing up, man. I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, like, you look at your social media. Every time we refresh, the number's just going big. I was like, nah, like, they're like, you like, it's massive. And I didn't realize until it was probably the whole, it took me the whole week to realize how big that night was because I had people messaging me from all over. I had obviously the following was growing. People like were spotting me on the street. People were spotting me out like, going to Godora. Like even like in a different city, people were asking me to come and take pictures. Like this is all new to me, man. Like so could all in. Yeah. This is all this is all new to me. So and I, and I, and I, and I did. Um, and yeah, it was just like insane. Yeah, insane. But like this is the crazy thing. Like had people. So like some of my mummy that couldn't come to the fight. Right? Yeah. They were watching it in like a local. Town. Big screw, okay, like, yeah, so. in a local tavern around the corner, and one of them, and he told me this actually. He said one of them watching it on the screen, and um, he was a, him and a few of his mates were just watching it. Yeah, they couldn't make it down for whatever reason, and they were watching it, and they obviously had the sound on, and heard the people heard the door in there. They all started coming over. They were like, "Oh, he's my nephew." Da, da, da. Won the fight, knocked him out. They were like, "Fucking hell, this is wicked!" Like, and then it just created this buzz. 100%. They were then what's happened to the next man down the pub? They were putting the TV on. Next thing you know, it was like going like Everyone. by the final fight, probably like three quarters of the Punjabi Sikh community were watching the fight. Legit. I even had like moms, like even like um, sons and daughters, were sending me videos of like their family, like moms, BBR were watching the fight. Wow, I didn't literally, know. Yeah, I did. Okay, like, I know it was no big. interest in boxing. Yeah, yeah. Hate no boxing. interest in sports in general. Hate, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they watch that fight. I go to God now, and the few of the Bibi and Mubba are like, like, ah, oh. oh, like, ha, like, say Sashigal and stuff. So yeah, 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 that's yeah. like, like, that's a different reach that no one's been able to get to. And I managed to do that in one night. That's insane. It's crazy. That's man. insane. That, that was that a crazy le thing. Legit, and it's proud. It's honestly, it's such a proud moment. You should be proud of that because Thank you. it's 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 absolutely massive what you've done, and. I don't think you you probably do realize it, but the impact it's had on our community is is unbelievable. Like yeah. like I I I hear it from from young kids, up in the kids coming yeah. in, and they they're like, oh, so what what do you want to be here for? Oh, I want to be like Dylan. I want to be. And I was like, Dylan, but we don't do boxing. <laughs> do you yeah, know? Like, yeah, I had a like, little yeah. banter with them, yeah. but it's like because they've seen it, and I'm guessing they've seen it from their dads or whatever it yeah, may be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's such a positive impact, and it's so. Honestly, it's such a big thing you've done, and and this is no disrespect to any anyone else, but from that from from a Punjabi Sikh point of view, and again, no disrespect, but we've never had that in this history of boxing. There's been yeah. great British Asians out there, such as Prince Nassim Hamid, such as Amir Khan, um, but they've come from a Pakistani background, which again they've done great things for our Asian community. But from having it from a Sikh Punjabi point of view, yeah. is so is so big. Yeah. Yes, we've had it in the MMA with Adrian Singh uh, yep. in the UFC. Uh, we've had it recent, like, not recently, like Gary Manga. I want to give him a little shout out for one championship. Yep. Like these are big signings. Do you know what I mean? And in the back, back it, I'm talking going to talk back in the day, but like Cash the Flash, like he's a big, big like pioneer of of, of, yeah. of the kickboxing world, yeah, shall we definitely. say? And then passed down from him was the likes of Sonny. And mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And like these guys have made it made it big, but national not even nationally worldwide you've made it yeah you've made it's it crazy, it's, it? it's, it's crazy it's, it's just it's blown you know up that's the biggest thing and that, it's, like, it's so it's honestly so good that's to the see. biggest thing that makes me happy like mm. genuine genuinely when you go down i went to an event probably like two or three weeks after um a, a football event over at derby football grounds and um it was a punjabi football tournament some sort of thing like that it's it called ipr soccer i think and they invited me along and um there were so many kids there and I tell you what the best ceiling is, is when the when you walk down, I walk down to pitch and where the fans and that were, and the kids were like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. You, like, you don't know how great, like, that's a, such an amazing feeling because they're like, they're buzzing to see you. Like, they're buzzing to come and see me. They want to take pictures. They want to shake my hand. They want to, like, they want to take, like, they want to want me to sign up. I went to Godra, um, Harnel Lane, GMP Godra, down here in Kov, um, for the Sikhi camp the week after. And uh, few, I walked in, a few of the kids, and the kids all shot up, like, oh, yeah. One kid said, can you just sign my top? I was like, I would love to. I was like, I, I asked um, I asked one of the Sevadars there, and I was like, Cook, am I allowed to sign his top? Like, yeah. his mom isn't going to come and batter me. Like, yeah. come and chase me for signing his top, innit? So you're not a top as yeah. well. So I was like, um, so I was like, 
you hang it tired of you no no I signed it so I was, I signed it anyway yeah but like just stuff like that like it, so, but like Wicked. that's that's all I want to do is just like provide the platform for the next generation of course, of course. help them get into the sport I know what it's done for me and I know what it'll do for many others and I've always said this from day one is it all starts by just walking in a gym 100% just walking Absolutely. into any gym like, Absolutely, you man. haven't got to. You haven't got to go in with the attention to do something great. Do to going in there and enjoying training. Yeah, is a win. Wicked, and and that, and that's all I want to do. Like, but you've started a trend. You started a trend. I don't think you've realised. I don't. Do you do you follow much MMA or in the UK? Do you follow much MMA fight scenes or anything like not, that? Or? Not massively. No. Nah. No. Nah, okay. So there's a there's a lad, a uh, good friend of mine, and I'll, I'll give him a little shout out. Kiru, he's fighting actually. Yes. Tonight. So hotel, over, he's fighting over in Manchester. Italy or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He's in Italy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, he's yeah, fighting yeah, tonight. I know, I know the brothers. He yeah. stood. He stood in the weigh-ins. With the flag, yeah. With the Nishan Sab, he yeah. stood there with the Kanda, and Sick. I was like, "That all started from you." Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, and it's so it's 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 you started the trend. There's another, uh, uh, forgive me because I don't know his name, but I think it's one of Kiru's uh, teammates from yeah. Manchester as well. Okay. For a few weeks ago, did the same thing. Pav, that's his. I, is think, it, I think it's his brother. Is it his, brother? his brother? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. guys. I didn't know yeah. that. But like, yeah, I, I, I saw it on 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 Kiru's social media, and I was like, yeah. wow. And I like, because I, I had the conversation with Guru years ago. This is, you're talking about 2016. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I remember having the conversation because he's re like, he was re like, it was nice to see him fighting with the orange MMA yeah. shorts. And ever since I started my career, I've always been in orange shorts. Yeah. And then I started putting like, like, um, word in on my shorts and stuff yeah. like that, you know, to, to try and get the, get it out there. And this is, for me, one of my first fights on Sky Sports, yeah. like in, but not, not but one Muay Thai. And then see Kiru do it, and then now you're then then you doing it and represent it, and then you made it worldwide of what yeah. you did. Now for the our generation, for the next generation, is this gonna be blown That's up it. everywhere? I and mean, like you started, it's time you started now, it. it, like you started it. it. We've we've seen it with like obviously the English English fighters. We've seen it with the Pakistani I, back yeah. Pakistani fighters. Now we're gonna see it with the I, Punjabi Sikh fighters. Yeah, hundred you know percent. I mean, man. we're gonna we're gonna see that transition, and um, and it's not just me. You've got myself. You've got. Um, you got Kiru doing it in, in MMA. You got Arjun Buller doing it in one championship. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've got um, uh, the Kuna brothers, yeah. the Kuna family doing it in in uh, wrestling. Yeah. So, I'm, so I'm talking about like there isn't just me. It's, it's everyone across the sports and then driving kids 100%. to into the sport of of well, martial arts, isn't it? Really, it is. Yeah. Whether you whatever you fall in love with, you fall in love with. And I'll, I'll never like you know how some people say like oh. Yeah, but a boxer like comes over to kickboxing. No, I just take it for what it is, and just yeah. they're in the sport to do. They're doing something good and positive. So just let let them do it. And 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 it's role models like well, I like to like to say role models like myself doing it on a big yeah, stage. Hundred percent. And obviously all the other guys as well. They're all doing big things as well. Definitely. They're in themselves. They're inspiring the next generation. And that's all I want to do is just get the next generation into gym and get them training because the benefits are massive, man. And you're doing honestly. it. And you're doing it. And ever since that tournament, look, look, you've gone and you're still undefeated. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Look, yeah. you've, you're going into each fight and you're doing it and you're representing. Now you've got your... Now this. you're known for your just just like all the other but you're known for those orange shorts yeah you're known, yeah, you're, yeah. known you're known for your it's not it's not called a gown anymore what's it called nowadays what you wear it's what like, you're walking it's in? just a jacket jack is it but jacket? I, I don't wear i'll just wear t-shirts yeah t-shirt yeah, 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 yeah your orange t-shirt yeah, yeah, yeah with your come down there yeah. do you got what i mean you're, you that's what you're recognized for do you got what i mean but yeah. um and that's it and it's it's great so to i've see. got so i've got some plans in, in, in boxing that i want to hopefully what? like legacy things so like there's there's obviously myself. You've got a, a guy called Gully Power from Wolverhampton. You have got Indabasi, Barad Singh. Yeah, but yeah. Um, there's a few other boxers as well, um, Punjabi boxers that are all over the country. So there's one thing I want to try and pull off with Sky, is get you all on the same show. Get us all on the same show. Why, why do, not? Do 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 a do yeah. a do a do a seat card. Do a seat fight yeah. card. It could be anywhere in the in the country. Yeah, do it. London and the Midlands probably make sense because uh, that's where we're all based closely yeah. based out of. But how big would that be? be like that's one thing that I, I want to get to. Whether I'm top of the bill or someone else top of the bill, yeah, yeah, so yeah. be it. But if I'm top of the bill, great. And then the undercard is like I want I want to pick and choose fighters on the undercard and, nice. and get all the lads on because why not? Why do you know what not? I mean? Why yeah, not? Yeah, Let's do just do one for our own. We've seen it with like the all female card that's going on next week. Yeah. Why not do one for us? That's it. 
Do you know what I mean? So, and, and I'm always trying to like back and trying to support and trying to like help help the mm. other lads out. I'm in the position. Obviously, I've worked hard to get in the position I'm in. Yeah, it hasn't hasn't come easy, but I'm in the position now. I'm fortunate enough to sort of support and help, and where I can, I will. Perfect. If I can try and get the lads onto a show on onto a bill, I, like you I will, will. I, I'll try. Wicked. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, you can I can't always promise anything, but I'd always try and help where course, I can. Hundred percent, absolutely. But foremost, like obviously, without sounding selfish, you. You know, focus on 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 you first. Does that yeah. make sense? Which yeah. like is uh, it's lovely to hear, and it's really good to hear that what your future plans are, what you want to be doing, and you've got to the stage now, and you want to keep on pursuing that. Do you get what I mean? And like you want to get to the to the, even a bigger stage of what, what you're currently at. But going back to that tournament, you've had the tournament. You've you've had this exposure as such. Yeah. Like you've not realized. Well, you've realized at the time. Yeah. Then preparing for the next bout and like trying to then juggle because I'm sure. Like I contacted you recently, I'm sure other people are there trying to contact you. I'm sure you're trying to. Like I saw um, Sky randomly rocked up to your shop. Yeah, yeah <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. randomly rocked up. But yeah, like, but yeah, they, 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 they turned. They, 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 they the last minute up. one that was yeah. But point being is, like you, you're trying to now juggle your tra- your fight career as such, and yep. training career, which is always going to be number one because yep. without that, you're not going to be who 100%. you are. But then obviously everything else that comes with it. How did how was that change of yeah. scenery? Because you didn't have that before, obviously. Nah, it was tiring. I'll, yeah. I'll be honest. With you. I was still working at that point, so I hadn't given my job. So oh wow, it's only it's only given my job in like July, probably the first last week of July, um, before my last fight. So I still worked. So I fought in June on the Sky Boxer Show yeah. at Coventry. I still worked for that, but it was in that time when I realised it's got hard it. work, man, because I'm trying to do a day job. Obviously, if I'm away from my desk doing interviews, like, I'm going to get pulled up and get sacked. I don't want to get sacked. Course, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it was difficult. It was tiring. And then I'm trying to train. And then people are asking for interviews. And, but this is all stuff that you need to do because it helps to keep my name current. It helps keep my profile out there. It helps to Absolutely. push me, you know. Even if at the, I'm at the stage of my career where I'm just doing any and every interview, if and when I become a world champion, I can say, no, nah, I don't want to do them. I'll do yeah, them. Yeah. I can't do that now. I'm still trying to build my profile. I'm still trying to push myself up. And I, and I have to put that work in. It, it is tiring. And it was tiring. Yeah. Um, and that's probably what more prompted me to petition that just to just to hand in my notice and, and give up work was because of how much outside of training stuff I have to do with boxing. Like a lot of my days now are filled up by doing different things like coming to the podcast today I had to make sure obviously I make sure I trained but I make sure I've rested and ate before I've came here Risk, to do it yeah, and then yeah, I'll go home now and then I'll probably train in the evening but I know I've got a set amount of time in between that I've got to play with but of course. if you said to me I can only do 10 o'clock I was sorry mate yeah. I, I can't come down do you know what I mean yeah, but of course, of course, of course. that because that, training that comes first but it is tiring oh, honestly no. it is oh, tiring no. and then like I watched that that June fight your uh, the fight you had in June yeah. sorry and I was watching that, and again, the movement, the game plan, yeah. everything went to plan, which obviously you did. You got the decision, that, like you got the win at the end of it. Again, preparing for each individual bout, is it is it still that same? Do you sit down with your coaches? Do you is it still that same mindset? This is exactly what we're gonna do. Obviously, it's not a tournament anymore, so you don't yeah. have to have that twenty yeah. minute break or anything. But yeah. talk to us about your movement because obviously your your style stands out. Yeah. It's, you're not boring. You're not sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam, yeah. Boom. yeah. Your style stands out. And that, like, all, all, all that aside, like, that's, that's what, that's what attract, like, no, no offense, but that's what kind of got my eyes glued onto the screen yeah. when I was watching your foot, your movement. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. And the speed that you, yeah. you're going at. Yeah. And I was like, and then everything else came after that. Does that make sense? Yeah, but like, yeah, I get, I get do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so your yeah. style stood out to me. So like again, going back into each camp now, what is are you are you yeah. change, not changing it up because you don't need to change anything? But it's like you, we're always working on stuff. We're always like this is the thing. Like I was two and zero coming into tournament, so I was a novice boxer, professional yeah. boxer, getting the fights to give me give me the right experiences and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, different types of opponents. Did the tournament blasted through that and then the, the next fight was go from the tournament and then I'm fighting in a four rounder but I'm not fighting in a four round fight four round fights are at five o'clock yeah yeah, <laughs> you, yeah or when the TV starts I was on the first fight when it flipped over to from Sky Action to Sky Main Event yeah. I was the first fight yeah in a four round fight from a lad that's like 
had no amateur background. Normally, it's like the big Olympians or yeah, lads that have done yeah, big. Yeah. They're the ones that get the big push. The main time. events almost. It's just yeah. me, a little old kickboxer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, but that was different because like, I've got to go back to back to sort of like the boxing. I'm fighting a journeyman. Typically, everyone yeah. knows journeymans go there to lose. But the type of journeyman. opponent I had, he'd come to win. Yeah. And there were things like I was probably too over, too drained. You know, I, I didn't. I only had like a couple of weeks off after the tournament, and then got back into training. Um, there were certain probably issues that I, that I had going into that fight that probably made that didn't allow me to perform to my to my full capability, which is probably why it looked a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. on the night than probably what it should have been. Mm -hmm. That's not to take away from my opponent, yeah, Drew Greener, who did a fantastic job of what he needed to to push me to 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 to, to get that yeah, next yeah. level out of me. Um, but I know I wasn't 100, percent and then obviously since then I've, I've then give up work and stuff, and, and really dedicated yourself, dedicated to myself, put my mind to it. Um, so that that's probably you know it was different because like I'm now an attraction. You know, I go down and, and all the media stuff was all built around. A lot of yeah. it was built around me. Yeah, Sky Sports Live or Sky Sky TV Live came to my shop and interviewed yeah, me and the family. Yeah. Like you don't see that. Never. Do you know what I mean? Legit. And they didn't do that for yeah. any of the fighter. They did that for me. Um, a lot of the build up. They came and recorded like boxer. The promoters. They came and recorded me get my hair cut. Oh, wow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. you know, like, they do that for AJ. They don't do that yeah. for me. But they did that for me. Like they put so much promotion part. Obviously, like. That's all new to me. So I was getting that, that part of that fight was getting used to all of this, all of the new lifestyle that I'm gonna You're be going to be a part of. But I've always said this from day one. I'm not in a position where I like I can't forget about boxing. No, I can't forget about what got me into that position, and that was the hard work. Yeah. No matter how much so we we have a cutoff point, and 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 it's like eight weeks out from a fight. Training is non-negotiable. Yeah. If someone can't move around training. It doesn't get done. Simple. Sorry, mate, but you, you've got to come to when it suits us. At the end of the day, boxing comes first because I'm still going in there putting my 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 life. You can it call is, it life it in the line is, because it is, you it can is. come out with some serious Inj some serious injuries and some serious illnesses from boxing. So yep. I need to make sure I'm still 100%. And that's why we've gone full-time. That's why we've gone fully dedicated. You know, Thankfully, I've got you know the family supporting me behind that. That's the biggest thing. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot, of the, a lot of the time they say, oh, no, you need to get a proper job. Legit. Like this, this isn't a career. You need to go get a proper job. Luckily, my family the other way around, and they're a little bit more westernized than than what probably what the older generation. Yeah, were. yeah, yeah. But I, and I saw, I saw like obviously your parents. They don't watch you fight. They don't nah, do your fights. Mom, mom mom's been to one fight. One. Well, like when I was kickboxing, like when I was about thirteen, fourteen, I lost, and she never came back. My dad's been to a few, and I and I have lost quite a bit, you know, as a kickboxer, but. And that was probably what built me today. But um, my dad's been to a few, didn't like it. So they just stay at the shop. Fab. They That's don't speak to each other, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're uh, like, they're angry they're, with each other. Because like, they're, they're on edge. They're nervous. Yeah, anxious, they're on edge. Anxious, anxious, yeah, yeah. anxiety's going through Mom's the Mom's just waiting for that phone call to come in. And mm. she's waiting for that phone call. But like, it's, it's yeah, they, they don't enjoy it. They don't enjoy it at all. And then, you know, like, obviously, you're saying it made you who you are right now. So you, obviously, you had you had your losses. In kick, not not boxing, but in, in kickboxing, how did you how did you deal with that? Like, what what made you? Because uh, you're going so many fights undefeated, you you have your loss. How do you kind of come back from that? Does yeah. that make sense? Like, how did you deal with that? Both mentally. I mean, I'll be honest. Every time I've lost, I've cried. Yeah. Like after the that. fight, I af that. after the fight, I've cried. I've Break gone down. into training. I've broken down. I remember when I've lost my first. Um, professional kickboxing fight for a world title and I just broke down like I was in tenure I broke down because I was like you put everything into it man like you give your blood sweat and tears you, you sacrifice so much and it doesn't yeah. come off and and that's only the and my coach explained it he said that's the, the winning instinct in you I'm I'm a winner like the mindset is we, we're there to win yeah. we're winners we don't just like to set up, set up second place so that was when I was like right okay they had to force me to take three weeks off from the gym after that fight because it was a long, long training camp, 12 round war. I was like bruised up as well. After a week, I wanted to get back in the gym. They was like, take another two weeks off. Came back and then I had that bit between my teeth. So every time I've lost, I've had that urge. It only makes you get better. You, I look, this is the thing I've learned from every, I learned from the wins, but I learned from every single loss. Every More time so than you the win, can isn't it? 100%. More so 100%. than the, yeah. So yeah, I lost, but, 
I got better. So thank you. And obviously in the position now where in that tournament, all those losses that I took back then, they paid off because one of the fights I needed to dig a bit deeper and really grit it out and grind it out. And I lost in that fight, but I needed to do that against Cholton. One of the fights where I didn't need to use my power, but I needed to use a bit more of my skill yeah. or, and a bit more of that, like, not power, but more of that... Um, contact speed. Contact yeah. speed. I, need to, I didn't do that in one of the kickboxing fights. I did that against Melvin. Yeah. And the power's a power. There you it, go. It they, pays off everything, 100%. Everything's a learning curve, isn't it, with it also? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. No, it's really good to hear that. It's really... And something, like, again, not a lot of people will know this because I'm sure everyone that follows you on social media will know this, which is a lot of people. But, yeah. like... For me, the thing that stood out for me, and again, I've got experiences of it as well, but yeah. your Sikhi, like, I, I love seeing it, like, every morning. Blessings. I see it. I see yeah, I see yeah. you on Twitter. I see your yeah. Twitter. I see your Instagram. Start the day with blessings. And I get, I, I, I 100% get it, but, like, has that always been you? Yeah. Or is that recently been you? Does that make sense? I've or, been the same. Everything. Obviously, when I was working, I couldn't get to Godwell every day. Yeah, I still can't get there every day, but I yeah. still try my best to go as much as I can. Um, before the fight, this has been my ritual since I was a kid, by the way. Oh, yeah. Before every fight night, was on the morning of the fight, go to Godwell, then I can crack on it and do what I need to do for the day. The Sunday, win, lose or draw, I'll go to Godwell. That, that's been that's my it. ritual that's been that's, that's, that's it we got, we've yeah. always gone to Godwell every day on a Sunday Perfect. when I was training um, and working every Sunday after the gym was go to Godwell and explain to us like what that does what that does for you because I, 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 I'll, I'll give you my little experience of it but explain to me like what that what, what it does for you as yeah. an individual do you, know? do you know what it just it keeps me focused you yeah. know I sit there for, for 20 minutes and I do my part and, and I just and, I, and it just gets me right. It just gets my mindset right. You yeah. know, it just gets me switched on. It gets me focused. Just keeps me zen. And it also keeps me down to earth. You know, but, we're not yeah. we're not bigger than the, than, big, man. the, the big man himself. Do you yeah, know what I mean? No, so one hundred percent. Because for me, I'll be I'll, like, I know everyone deals with it differently. I started fighting, and I don't know if how you feel about this, and you could share your experiences in a second. But like, I started fighting, and it was I realized when I started fighting how lonely the sport is inside that ring or inside that cage for us. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It's like, mm -hmm. it's only you. Mm -hmm. Yes, your, your your team's there, but they're there. Does that outside. make sense? They're, they're outside. outside it. You're yeah. inside. Yeah. So I was, I was going in with, I, was, I started getting more into the spirituality of it all, not religiously, but spirituality of it all due to the fear of it. Does that make yeah. sense? Like I was yeah. going in there for the, like I was going and for almost like that extra bit of protection. Yeah. Um, and that's why, like, for me, now, even to this day, like, I'm, I'm always there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm always yeah, yeah. there. Like, and, yeah. and it's still, it's still, I still live by that and I still, eat, like, go with that. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And it's, like you said, it, you can't start your day without it. And it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's great to see, but like I said, it's something that, again, myself, because I've lived it, but it's the other, outside of, social media they haven't seen that and, it's, and when yeah. i saw that i was just like it's not Why? fake like anything i anything i do no, it, it, uh, yeah. but obviously a lot of, so, like, like, like you just thought then yeah. like was it is it just a thing of now because of yeah. the, the image that i'm trying to create no, i'm not course, trying, it's, yeah. it's just it's just le legitimate and it? it's just what we do is just i never had twitter before the tournament and i created it and i just use it now because it just helps for promotion and stuff so and i just like posting on there so and I, and I do it a bit more now than i probably did before but same same stuff I used to do before now as I'm as I do now. Absolutely, no, it's it's really nice to see, man. It's really good to see. Um, is there is there like linked with everything that we've we've just discussed as well? Do you have any rituals before you're about to walk out? Like you know when you I know you're telling me about you are warming up. You got your schedule. You're you you guys are very regimented. Yeah. What are you thinking inside your head before you're about to walk out? You go, um, you, you get you get you you get the officials coming to the change rooms. Yeah. You're next. What happens to your mindset then? Then literally. In, in your head. Yeah. What you... <laughs> I'm just stirring now because it's like you're trying to put myself in that position now. Yeah. I'm just, do you know what? I'm just like, right, okay, it's go time. But that is a point when they say you're next is when like it drops and I'm like, shit. Shit, it's fun. I'm nervous. Yeah. Like, I'm nervous. I feel my stomach go in. I feel the nerves go in. I'm like, fuck. I wish I just just said I was ill. Yeah, I I was Ill. Like, but I've always been yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, I was a kid, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I've just learned, I've just got better to deal, learn to deal with it as I got older. But um, yeah, and then you walk out and you look out and I'm just, for all, all I'm thinking is win, 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 yeah. win, win. Whatever I need to do is win. And then all, all else I'm looking at is just, um, just win and then, and then just, just focus on, to focus on what, what I need to get done. Just going through a few little things in my head. Announce my name, the Dudleys go, I'll look out and I'll look out at the crowd and I thought, yeah, they're here for me. They're here to watch me yeah. go put a show on. And then I'll make that ring walk and that's it. I forget about everything. Get the job done now. And like, explain, so you're behind the curtains. Yeah. You've got the curtains there. Yeah. You hear the MC. Yeah. Announcing you out. And like, does it, like I know you've explained you know, your anxiousness, your nervousness, that nervous energy, all of that. You're about to walk out. What, just, just talk to me because it's like, do you, do you get that? Do you get that energy from your feet? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I, I you get what you it. mean. You get like, you get this weird like. You feel for anyone who hasn't been in that position, it's hard to explain it. Yeah, you, you know where I'm coming yeah, from, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah. I can only way I can explain it is like. You're nervous and you hear the announcer call your name and you get like this sudden rush of energy, like electric shot, like, ooh, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like adrenaline. this adrenaline oh. rush. Yeah, you get an adrenaline rush, you get like goosebumps, you get your stomach's like doing 100, 150 backflips, like it, it's crazy. But then like, and then something happens. Everyone's different. Yeah. So I walk out and I look. And I put my hand up to one side, put my hand up to the other side, and then I do a little bit of shadow boxing. That's my little routine that I go through. And then I walk into the ring. When I walk into the ring, that's when everything, like I forget about everything else because I step through that ropes. It doesn't matter about the thousand of people that are yeah. outside. It's you and him that is and insane. the referee. But hopefully the referee don't get involved. Yeah. It's you and him. <laughs> it's you it. and him. Yeah. That Nothing is it. Else. What, else. what is there? Like, what what is there? What else is all these other people like? I, I get it. It's support, and you need that support. But I actually don't hear a single thing. Yeah. On honestly, like genuinely, people ask me, "Jamie, Jamie, it's like shouting." I'm like, don't hear nothing. Until after, in it. Only people I hear is the three people in my corner. Yeah. And the occasional thing from his corner. Yeah. When you're in that in do that you, in that area. Talking about that, do you focus on their corner? I, I don't, but it's like, do you know when you just hear, yeah. sometimes you hear that noise because they're yeah. close to the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear sometimes what they're saying, um, yeah. but I'm focused on what your, my three your are team saying. saying. Yeah, yeah, team. yeah. No, yeah, respect, yeah, man. Yeah. That's insane. But everything else, forget out, like, don't matter how loud it is. Sometimes you do struggle to hear them because yeah. it is loud in the thing, but a lot of the time I can I can just sieve so it all now, out. The network that you've created and the, and the community that you've created, not just, and, I, and, and please, don't, for the listeners out there, it's not just about talking about Sikhs and travel. It's, it's nationally. Do you get what I mean? It's for everyone. And you've got like a really good support and and supporters. Yeah. That, and I, I love the chant. Do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No, I do, they're like, they're, they're loyal. That, that, 100%. I can't, I can't believe like where they're, where it's come from. Yeah, I yeah, just don't, I, I, I get where it's come from. I, I think people have just, I guess it's like the whole Ricky Hatton effect, isn't it? Like yeah, yeah. People yeah. fell in love with the type of person he is. And I'm guessing yeah. that's the same sort of thing with me, but obviously only just being me, not being fake, is only going to help it and obviously push that even more. But it's crazy, man. Like yeah. literally people come from all over the country just to come and watch me box. I've ne a... I never would have thought of that. I used to, I never used to struggle selling tickets, but I used to be like, Oh, like you know, you like, really you have, have like some some cousins that like say, "Oh yeah, I'll come, I'll come," but they don't come. Yeah, and you got some family that are closed, and they say they'll come, but they don't. Like, and obviously now they're all coming, but now all these other people are coming as well that I don't even know. It's really and do you know what the crazy thing is? Because a lot of the people are like, you know, quite a lot of them are shop related, because obviously through the family business. I was about to say, your, yeah. custom, your family, not your customers, but you've, yeah, your mum and like, dad's customers. We've got a lot of customers. We get a yeah. lot of like other shopkeepers and stuff come to our fight. So we've got like a whole network of shopkeepers and then even like suppliers as well. Oh, um, it's wicked. mad. So like they, they all come down. It's like, they all come. And it's all, it's like, it's like how we realise we got a, like it's a small circle. Yeah. Because we know Massive. certain people yeah, and yeah, we yeah, never yeah. cross paths. Yeah. Same thing for these guys. So like, they'll be at the fights and be like, I ain't seen you in years. What are you doing here? I'm here to support Dylan. What are you doing here? I'm here to support Dylan. Yeah. And it's like, they're all coming to watch my fight, but they're all connecting with people that they haven't seen in years. It's like, that's the maddest thing. Because I'll come out, I'm like, one of like, I think on my last show, my, um, one of my mum may rang me and like, can't believe like, such and such were at your fight. 
I ain't seen them in years. Like, I can't believe that. Like, why are they there? I, was like, I don't know. They just bought tickets to come down, innit? Yeah, yeah, like, that's, yeah. That's yeah. just how it works. And and people came from like uh, Gravesend, Kent to come watch wow. me box. And a lad wow. came from Newcastle. Um, oh, um, wow. Yeah, so like... It's well, everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere, bro. So it, this is what I was like trying to hit at because obviously you've got massive now, massive support. And I, I'm not just talking nationally as well, worldwide. You've got fans probably in Canada, America. Yeah. Obviously... I know we're, I'm going to touch upon that in a minute, like about possibly fighting out there one day as well. But like you had, I, I want to go back to your tournament because obviously you, before your tournament and no disrespect to you, bro, but like you weren't known as much. Yep. You had your tournament, boom. Like your family said, yep. started going viral and all of a sudden you got X amount, a thousand million or whatever followers yeah. you have on, on both Instagram, tick, I don't know what else you're on, but yeah. Twitter, yeah. TikTok, yeah. TikTok, TikTok what, yeah, yeah, all of that. Preparing for a fight before your tournament, yeah. you had everything strategically planned. Like you said, on top of that, you were working. You left your full-time job after the tourney after, and during, obviously, your fight. And now, obviously, you're preparing still for your fight. You've just, you hit it saying boxing still number one. Your training still yeah. number one. And that's never going to change because yeah. that's your craft. That's you. Mm-hmm. How, explain to me how you feel about... I don't want to use the word pressure because it isn't pressure, but or if it is... Explain to me how you're managing that in terms of the social media presence that you now have, yeah. in terms of the people that are following you. Um, the walking down the street is like, and people wanted to take a selfie with you. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, just like, explain to me about how that's making, how, how, you, how you're managing that, how both physically and mentally, how, how you feel about all of that. Like, Do you know what? It's like, I take all of, all of, all of that in my stride, and, that, and that's how I've dealt with it all the way through. It's like, um, so often when people are asking for pictures or they send me a message, I reply to everyone yeah. on pretty much nine times percent of people on Instagram, and people like at the fights and they're showing me reading back messages of when I've messaged them. But obviously, I can't remember because there's that many messages yeah. that come through. But I genuinely just speak to everyone. I have to talk to everyone, mate. <laughs> yeah. If they ask me a question, I'm gonna answer it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll answer it honestly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, that that's just, that's the way, but I just I just I don't really think it's pressure. Do, do you know what I mean? It's just like enjoy it for what it is. Be thankful that people are supporting my journey and and and, and are backing me and, and are willing to share. And I put a video out there, sharing it. They're they're liking it. They're commenting on it. They're doing all that stuff. They're sharing it on WhatsApp with their families, and then it's going around like that. Um, one family in Derby created like a chant. I can't remember what it's called now. They created the, a chant after me. That ch- and, is it and, the the ch- that one? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Might, it might, might, it might be. Yeah, and I was just like, that's just mad. <laughs> um, but I just take it all, all in my stride. It's not, it's not really pressure, is it? Yeah, of course. You know, of course you, yeah, you just, you just got to learn do to deal with it. Hundred percent. Learn to handle it. It comes with uh, the package of where you, yeah, where you want to be. Do you understand what I mean? I get that. I get that because I know a lot of. I'll be honest with you, like, I, I know a lot of people deal with things differently yeah. everyone's everyone's different at the end of the day and i get it but like i remember like when i was when i was competing i love i didn't those makes me sound old now but social media wasn't as big it was big but not as where it is now does yeah, that make yeah, sense yeah. and it's like it's, it's 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 crazy to see like how much social media has an impact on everyone's lives yeah. now do you know what i mean yeah. do you do you get do you get obviously you've got tons of positive supporters do you get any i don't like using the word trolls because i know obviously you're not at that level yet but do you are you do you have anything I've, like I've that had a few. i've had a few. legit yeah so, straight up yeah i've had i've had a few and was that after but, the tourney or was that after yeah, is that uh, recently? yeah obviously everything's going to be after the tournament now yeah. because like that that was, that was people that's know who yeah. i am um obviously I'm, I'm like careful in terms of what i put out on instagram what i share out on instagram um obviously that's probably the biggest platform that i've probably got and probably what i use um but I just share stuff that's real to me, issues that are real to me. You know, yeah. I do share a lot of stuff that is happening in Punjab and stuff. Um, you know, because real issues, real issues going on. Do you know what I mean? So people do need to know and understand that. Um, obviously, I do get some backlash now and then. Not not much, to be honest. Um, I, I've, had, I've I've had a bit of it. Like I've had people like call me out for. I need to fight such and such. Or I need to do this. Do your standard. Do your standards. Yeah. But I've had stuff where, like, obviously after the tournament, and I sat up on the stage and had that final interview. I had the Nishan sub on my laps. Yeah. Now, what happened? What some of the backlash was was that it was below my head or something. It was too low down, and it was touching my feet. 
I think what it was, the corner of the flag was like, obviously it was draped over my knees, wasn't it? Yeah. And it yeah. was like, it wasn't touching my feet, but it, it was, was just draped close to yeah, my yeah, feet because yeah. that was obviously a fairly big flag. Um, obviously, I couldn't just hold it up like this or I, I didn't want to put it over me because you couldn't really see what it was. I wanted. To, I thought that was the opportunity to, to showcase. showcase who we are. Yeah. And I thought, put it on my lap. So it's a nice, subtle way of letting people see who we are. Absolutely. Not me, we, yeah. us collectively. Yeah. Um, and I did that. And obviously people came back and were like, oh, you shouldn't have it on your lap. You shouldn't have it here. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. And do you know what? I, I didn't comment back, but I had a lot of people comment back, positive people coming back and saying, you should... Um, you should be thankful that someone's, you know, showcasing yeah. us as a culture on a different platform, Absolutely. on a new platform where we haven't been showcased before, ever, ever, ever. ever. Uh, yeah. in a sport that we've never really had massive representation. We're getting more now, but we never really had it. So be thankful that he's doing it. He's like, I've not done anything out of bad, spite, like, yeah. a spite or anything bad, or I haven't thought about doing it because I don't care. I'm not a careless person. Yeah, I did course. think about what I was doing and that was what I thought was right at the time. So people, pe but look, at the end of the day, when you, when you get to a certain level, people are always, I turn left and you say, why didn't you turn right? That was quicker. That was yeah, better. That yeah, was this. Yeah. You're going to get it. Do you know what Every, I mean? So yeah. I was just like, I was just like, yeah, you lot don't really make, you lot don't really have any legs to stand on because, you know, you're not talking sense. And now look at, look, now look at that image. Look yeah. how, look how, look how the positive impact you've had on everyone f because of that one image. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Minority, min minority will say, yep. you're this, you're this, you're yep. this. Majority will be like, thank you. Yep. Do you understand what I mean? And I, I'm thanking you for that. Do you yep. get like, because what you've done for, not, I, it's not so much the sport, but what you're doing as an individual is like, wow, mind blowing. And like, you. Re respect to you for that respect. Um, since since the tourney, obviously, uh, I, I again want to touch upon when you're walking out, you're representing as always, and obviously the Punjabi listeners out there, not even Punjabi listeners, everyone listening out there, probably obviously the tra tragic news of like Siddhu Musiala, and like as soon as that happened, that was what May at the end of May. Yeah, you fought a couple of weeks, about three weeks, like four, three, four three, weeks, three, four later, weeks later. Yeah. And you tributed to him, man. Like, like oh, yeah. uh, that was that was huge. That was on Sky Sports. You made a massive tribute. That again, that was a national. That went worldwide yep. because the same week you did it, uh, a fighter from Van, uh, not so a fighter from Montreal, a friend, a friend of mine, um, who fights for one championship, yep. did the same thing. Yeah, um, similar, well, similar things, shall I, shall I say, uh, for one championship in his MMA bout, but you did it and you did it on the scale of Sky Sports and letting the UK nation know about it. But explain how that came about and like the feeling that obviously, because obviously we all know, we, again, that that tra that tragic news affected everyone differently. But like, exactly. explain, explain how that. I mean, to be to be honest, like, I wasn't I wasn't sure whether what what to do. Obviously, the, the news broke about Sidney Musa, and it was sad. It was obviously like it was heartfelt for the community, wasn't it? Like it was a big big loss for us all, really, because of what he was trying to do. Obviously, he started to get involved in politics and stuff. So, you know, I, I wasn't sure what to do. But do you know what? I'm thankful that my close team said you've like it's good if you know, you need to do something because it's it's the opportunity now just to showcase who he was, show show him offers a person and what he achieved on that on that big stage so what what we did was um we, we obviously we thought about it quite a lot um so my two dollies pavan matu they had a a, a picture of sid on the on the orange t-shirt with dilna nimada on the front um that was obviously what he was that yeah, was saying and on the bottom yeah, yeah. just had our uh our, i don't think we had our we just had sid and his year he was born the year he died yeah um on on the front of the t-shirt live on sky so people could that was just the immediate representation straight that i away. wanted to get straight i away. just had my normal fight t-shirt on and then obviously we played a track 47 um which was an english slash punjabi style track which obviously resonates with what he did yeah. cross cross um cross genre really because no other real Punjabi singer has really done, done that. that. Done like, that and, not and, on that bigger note as well. Featured in the in the UK charts, like and yeah. in the worldwide charts with that. Do you get well, then obviously off the back of that, I know there's a lot a lot of tracks that are probably gonna. St I know he's got a lot of tracks in the background, you know, like that are gonna be dropping. Like, Drake. Didn't the, need, I didn't need to say. Got, yeah, there's like, one with Drake so, that's about to drop. Yeah, how, how many artists get to, get to hit, like feature with Drake? Not many. How many Punjabi artists does Drake recognise? One. 
Do you know what I mean? That's massive. So I was just like, I just had to do something to, to and, that, and that was a right song. And everyone like, I remember at the time, I'm just focused on my fight. And it was the same thing. My ring walk, it's the same thing I go through all the time. Like, I just focus on the fight. Take it all in, but focus on the fight. When I watched it back, um, I was like, yeah, like you can feel the buzz. Like you could honestly feel the buzz. Yeah, feel that energy when cause there was that many up in it in the in the arena itself. Obviously, you had Adam Azim fighting on there as well. Like he he brought his own uh, Pakistani crowd as well. So there was a lot of like Asian people in there. There's a TikTok video, yeah. <laughs> there's a TikTok video of Amir Khan dancing uh, just to the. To Legit. Was it? Yeah, there's a TikTok oh, video flying around somewhere. There, man. I'll, have to, I'll have to find it. I can't yeah. remember where it was, but someone sent it to me. And I was like, crazy. But Uncle was dancing there as well, like, you know, like behind the corner post. And then Khan was doing his thing, but it, it didn't really come off as well as Uncle, obviously. But like he was like dancing to it. Like, obviously, that's that was that was the that was the atmosphere in the arena, to be honest. It was when I watched it back, I was like, yeah, man, like that's mad. it's emotional, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if you find I find it emotional watching that. I was just like, wow, for respect, man. Again, yeah. it's massive. But obviously, it was something that like I wanted to do to to really just like like get people, represent yeah. him get people yeah, like yeah, yeah. people didn't know who who was they would be going on there thinking What's who's this who's this guy why they all got this why are they all wearing this t-shirt and then Bam. all they had to do was type in Sid Do and you know the first thing would have come up was all about him and his yeah, life yeah and that's it that that's where that that was that was what I wanted to do and what I wanted to portray and and I, f I think it did come off well to be honest 100% 100% um, you know like, I, I do a lot of like I didn't have any negative on that at Nothing. all all positive all positive it yeah. is it is it's such a positive impact man that's that's insane that's it's, it's honestly it's really really good to see um but now respect to you for that now I know I've not asked you this and I probably asked this to everyone but like growing up yeah you went into kickboxing Mm -hmm. You've now become boxer, pro boxer, mm -hmm. doing exceptionally well. Who's what's what was in your inspiration? What was your motivation to? Did you have an idol as such to look up to? Um, was there anyone that stands out, or was it just you? Like I know. Nah, no, it was. It, you know what? There's three. Okay. Three people. Yeah. Three big people. It, it, it that really inspired me it, it, in my career. Um, I'm not talking like probably they, well they were kickboxers but okay. t t talk going from kickboxing but they still inspire me now um, Uncle Baggy yes. Richard Waller Simon Akufo Tete the free your coach team, I've got in my team. corner because you don't realise like what people don't realise was Waller and Simon were fighters back in the day when I was coming up so they used to take me and a lot of the juniors out on runs when they used to run wow. and they used to put time into us juniors and teach us a lot of the craft they used to corner a lot of us as well and give us pass on their knowledge so okay. I learned so much off them two alone about everything to do with fighting when I say everything dieting uh, running how to mentally focus yourself yeah. before a fight you know coaching you know, gaining new skills and tricks and learning new techniques, all of them. Obviously, at that time, Uncle was one of the coaches in the gym. He helped pad, he, well, he was their pad men as well. Wow. So he did pads for Simon and Walla and now they're doing pads and, and coaching me. So they're the three that oh, I look up to because they're the ones that really have helped me get to, I'm not where I am without them three, 100%. Respect. Obviously, I'm, the biggest one be, being being Uncle out of all of that. Because he's the one that's right. Yeah. Everything he did, sacrifice, well, he still does. Yeah. But I love that picture that you put on your Instagram, I think oh, a couple of weeks ago, where there's a picture of the three of you from back in yeah. the, not back in the day, a couple of years ago. That, that was my Midlands how, title fight. Midlands how how, how title long ago was that? Because you look mm. young there. Oh, oh, no. Where, the, where oh, you would that have a belt or something? You had a belt and you were wearing blue trousers. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was my that was my first senior kickboxing title fight. So that was when I fought for the Midlands area title Mid and yeah. I knocked the kid out in the and third round. And then your team. With yeah. got, Three and people. Shaved, shaved head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah and then, yeah, 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 and then yeah, you've yeah. got the same picture, not the same yeah. picture, but the same, the same posture yep. in, in, your, in your previous fights yep. just now. And it's like, that's it. And day you don't one, see, you know what it is? Apart from Conor McGregor, you don't see that. Nah. Apart you know from what? Conor I've McGregor, had a lot you don't of see like... that. And that's really beautiful to see. Because that, that goes with the core values of what martial arts is, one of them, which is loyalty. Yeah. And and this is no disrespect to any of the other fighters, but no, people will fight, they have a loss, and they're like, oh, it's, it's not, they don't take responsibility. Oh, I stand because I didn't get this, I didn't get this, so I'll go to another team. Now. Does that make, and mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. love, I, I, that picture just stood out for me because that is 
the only person I've seen it with is Conor McGregor. Yeah. He stood by his team, yeah. win, lose, or draw. Do you understand? Yeah. And you've done the same. You lost any kickboxing matches, but you've never gone, oh, I stand to them. Yeah. You've taken responsibility. So like, this is the thing, like, them three have seen me from a kid growing up and coached me from a kid growing up. So they know me. They know what makes me push. They've seen me from a sort of like a shy, timid kid that didn't want to... My fighting style was very... Uh, um, not come forward is like boxing the yeah. back foot, like moving around, tippy tappy. Not tippy tappy, but like I, I was gonna come forward, and I didn't have that aggression. Yeah, yeah. So they put that into me, and they've seen that transformation now from a from a child to a teenager to a young adult to an adult. So they've been through all of that with me. Um, so like I wouldn't get rid of them. I've had a lot of people say to me when I didn't put a good performance in against Stu Green and said, oh, I need to jump ship. He needs to go with one of those big coaches. And I don't believe in that because good, good. these coaches don't know me. My coaches yeah. know me and I know what they're teaching me is good for me. Yeah. Whether it was a bad performance on the night, everyone has a bad night. Do you know what I mean? Everyone has a bad night. It is what it is, but you live and learn. And, and, I, and I learn and we made some changes. This is the thing. My coaches understand if they know I didn't put a good performance in, we all sat, they, they probably sat back and were like, okay, we probably need to do this, need to do that. And they've made changes in themselves. They've yeah. learned themselves. Yeah. How many coaches are willing to learn and, and adapt themselves? A lot of people I mean? are stubborn in. It's like that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks and these yeah. people are willing to learn. We're always. willing to learn all the way through. And I, I know that they've got my best interests at heart and I've got their best interests at heart. We're one team, we're one family. Like genuinely, we go out for a meal after a fight uh, the we like probably the Wednesday or the Thursday after a fight. We all sit round the table. Don't talk about fighting. Don't talk about the fight. That's done. We have a chat. Let's just ha let's just talk a load of crap and yeah, just switch off, good. and that's it. And we're all one team, one family. And we're all just in it together. Been there from day one. Like I said, there's nice. some older pictures that I start sharing soon <laughs> from when I was right little young. So yeah, it's, um, I think the public would love to see that. If I'm honest, yeah, because it's just seeing with the grassroots of it almost. Yeah. Does that make sense? I think. But I used to watch si Simon and Waller fight back in the day. Simon was a little bit more technical, yeah. a little bit more of a like it was a banger, but it was a bit more technical in its style. Uh, Waller was just a, a brawler, yeah. scrapper. But in the gym, it was like really technical, really good, like hard to hit, good power. Yeah. In the ring, you just like a different, different fighter. Wow. Honestly, just a different wow. fighter. Like should, we were, we were watching him and be like, okay. Round one, he might lose round one. It'd be like, okay, we're going to wait for Waller to get hit. Then he's going to look like a rage will come and he'll go for it. And he'll end up knocking the opponent out, like win whatever round after. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's mad. Like, but I've watching them from young, like I learned so much from them, learned loads from them. And that's what inspired me watching them win titles. I was like, yeah, like, that's where I want to get to. I want to be like them. That's brilliant. That's awesome. And have you had like, obviously since, since you becoming this massive superstar you are now, You've had any people approach you to say jump ship like you just said? You've had, you've had, obviously, I'm guessing you've had tons of sponsorship deals and all of that come through. But like, have you had any, again, you've had tons of positive, I'm guessing, but yeah. any negatives from it? Like, in the sense of, um, ah, leave the, or do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, I've had a few messages um, from people that, like, again, it's people that don't know me and don't know the story and don't know what we've got as a team. Mm. So those outside people are saying, oh, he needs to jump ship. Easy way out. Yeah. You can, I could jump ship today, yeah? Go to another coach, a, a more popular boxing coach, whoever that is. Go with them. The next three fights could be easy fights. Win all three. Oh, look, Dylan Chima's doing better. Get into a tough fight and that coach won't know how to get me through the trenches in that tough fight. That's Because they don't know you. Because yeah. they don't know me. There might be good coaches, Yeah. but they might not be the right coach for me. There you go. But you yeah. win three fights and you think that's the best coach for you, then you lose and you've jumped ship once, you're probably going to do it again. You're going to keep doing and it. And it becomes a habit. Career. You've, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. fair play. Have you you've been in, has any of the other, the big boxers come to see you or, or pro, you've been approached by anyone? Like, like um, you thought where Amir Khan was just stood but ringside with you. Has he approached you? Has he come to say hello or anything? No, and, like when we're at shows and stuff, like, like well, I'll say hello and stuff. And yeah. a lot of the boxers do recognize that was a crazy thing. That's was, nice, man. Like that's when good, you go baby. into shows and they're like, they're coming out spudding your hand, they're coming out shaking your hands or giving you a hug or whatever. Like, that's wicked that's nice, and that's man. really good. Um, because I remember like a lot of the fighters used to watch on TV. Yeah. And now they're coming up saying hello and I'm on a chit chat. That's One weird. of the best ones is um, Tassa Jonas, world female yeah, champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's fighting again on the 12th of November. 
she's one of the nicest people I've ever met in boxing. Really? Hands down, yeah. Respect, so man. I remember I was in Manchester for the Cruiserweight tournament. Yeah. Um, and I was there presenting and doing some bits and bobs with, with, with the team there. And I was sat ringside and I was walking out and she came up to me and goes, how you doing? You're right. And I was like, gave me a hug and I was like, well, what do I say? What do I do? Like, uh, that, there's a genuine someone who I looked up to in boxing is then just come up to me and said hello and then, I, then we just had like a really good chat and stuff and then um, we just get along now and just see her at shows and I try and go down and support her at all the all boxing shows where I can like one of the genuinely like one of the nicest people I've met in boxing that is yeah. wicked that's awesome man yeah, it's good man have you met like Tyson or, or AJ or anyone like that yet no I've, I've, I've not met any of them yet AJ um, generally is one of the nicest people yeah. I've met I, I got to meet AJ 2016 it was 27 something like that me and my wife we met him in um, a friend of mine Tyson his, his actual name is Tyson uh, he's, he's got his, he does like runs events and stuff so okay. he, had, he had him down to do like a meet and greet and stuff okay okay but he took so much time out to just have a conversation with him yeah. and it was just like wow do you know what I mean he's such a genuinely lovely guy I think you'll you'll get on well he didn't have him. to do that though no, did he no he could have like, just done, it should have been a two second thing yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, the people taking the pictures the photographers they're like, r like pushing us and he was like no 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 wait his friend, like, do you know what I mean? And yeah. he, he sat and had a conversation with us for about a good 15, 20 minutes, held up the queue for us. And I was like, wow, didn't need to do that. Yeah, and it's didn't like, to, yeah. do you know what I mean? And it's respect. It's like, that's where my respect, I always had, when I see someone do something really well, your respect naturally goes up for them. Yeah. But when they do stuff like that, it's like even more. And it's like, yeah, yeah. it's really nice energy to Definitely. be around. Does that make sense? Definitely. So it's cool. So any any big plans of uh, for the rest of for the rest of this year? What's what's coming up? Is there anything that? Yeah, so we're just we're just waiting for a date to come through from from Sky and, and Boxer now. Um, I, I had some time off, so I've, do you know what I've had? You've not had time off. I've, I've been seeing I've, your I've social media. You've been. I've had, I took well. What we in October? So yeah. near enough. Twelve end of the month would be twelve months since I turned pro. In twelve months, look at how much my life has changed. Wow. I used to have like. Maybe a week, two weeks off after a fight. So yeah. after every fight, I've only had two weeks, maximum two weeks off. So by the time the tournament, I had two back-to-back -back yeah. fights after the tournament. Yeah. Uh, within two fights within four weeks. So I needed a break. Uh, August, I went away. I went to Abif with the lads for, nice. a, for five days. And then I went to Turkey with Bibi and Baba and, nice. and all the grandkids went. So we had, like, I, I needed that break. And come back and obviously eat, eat some food. You enjoy yourself. You pig yeah, out a little bit. Yeah. That's fine. Like that's the reset for me. Yeah, to be honest, everyone needs that reset. 100%. You can't be at that peak all year round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. to have you've got to have that little bit of a dip where you downtime push up downtime, again. Like so you mentioned now, earlier. now we're back in. So I've been back in camp since September. Uh, what we're in October, so we're just pushing on for a date now. Hopefully in November, uh, nice. we'll get that through. I'll probably only box once. I wanted to box twice, but I'll probably get one one before the end of the year. One far night in this year, and then. We'll push would that on, be Sky or would that, that be? That'll be Sky. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, but back, nice. back on Sky. That only took one fight outside of Sky on my last fight okay. because they couldn't get me on a show. Fair enough. So I boxed in June. I knew I was going away in August and my coaches wanted me to box in the four rounds again just to keep myself, just to get that another is, one that, in. Yeah, yeah. Sky couldn't get me on it or Boxer couldn't get me on a show. Uh, they had a show in Bournemouth on the same day on the 25th of July. They couldn't get me on because uh, it was packed out already um, so I was like fine we agreed that I could, they could, I could just box on a small hall boxing show non-TV um, and did that got got the win and um, then obviously went away now we're, we're back on Sky stepping up to six rounds this time as well so we are looking to, to push on but we're still in very much of the the learning and developing stage of my career you know yeah. we, we're going to obviously we're pushing on with the rounds and the opponents I'm going to get are going to be good opponents yeah. good journeymen Again, you've still got to be realistic and there will be journeymen, yeah. but there'll be guys that are coming to win. So these journeymen that I'll, that I'll be boxing will have a good few wins on the records, maybe even got a win recently or a stoppage recently. So you know they're going to come to win. And, you know, I'm ready now. Now that I'm full-time, I'm ready to see what impact that has made to my boxing career and how I'm going to box better because I know I, I will for sure. So we're, we're going to see that now, hopefully in November, but I'll have a week off. Christmas and New Year, I won't have much time off. Uh, I'll still be in the gym grafting so I can get to a date early next year if one comes round. And then we're just going to no, keep, keep active keep, now. Keep, keep active, going. keep busy, keep going and keep pushing and keep growing. And what's your long-term goal with this? Where where do you see yourself? Say we're in 20, we're what? We're 22 now? 22, 22 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah. Where do you see yourself? 25, 26? I mean, I'm tw what? 20, 26 now, so I'll be 27 next year. So I'll, look, by the end of next year, I'll only be pushing on hopefully close to English title fight. Um, English title, 
then I want to be you know fighting okay. for the British title within the next two years by 24 I want to be in those nice. big fights man like once I've once I'm through this this stage of my career now I'll be ready then to push on for those going, fights going for the big ones yeah yeah 100% and then English title, British title, European, then push on for awards. Why not? That's what, that's that's what we're in the sport for. We're, I'm in the sport. Like I never ducked and dive anyone in kickboxing. And I never call any opponents out. Don't need to. Don't need, yeah, Just yeah, fight yeah. whoever's in front of me and beat whoever's in front of me. I've got a good team around me. I've got good management around me that are going to get me in the good fights at the right time for okay. when, it's, when it's good for me. So we'll get those fights and we'll get those big title fights and bring some hopefully big nights for for us all to, to take part and enjoy. Yeah, that's it, man. I can't wait. I really can't wait. I'm going to be there as a, as a fanboy, like, you know, yeah. rooting for <laughs> you. Le legit, I'll be rooting for you. Everyone here will be rooting for you. Um, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Honestly, I can't wait to see see what you're, like, you're going to be yeah. achieving. Um, and I can't wait to see you. Exciting, and, uh, honestly, it's exciting time, it's exciting time yeah. man. See you at the MGM one day as well, man. You know, do you look, got me? The like, amount of people like, that I've said, like, when are we going to Vegas? I was like, it'll <laughs> come, it'll come. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Ima but imagine that. Look, I'm let's set the scene now. Like, yeah. we take a Ricky Hatton esque painful, not even 23. We take a painful. That's enough Punjabis to, to make our arena <laughs> erupt, innit? Yeah. So we take a painful over, but we have the Dullies and that walking out. Something that Vegas has I've never seen. seen. America hasn't seen. Yeah. In boxing. In boxing. True, that's true. You're going to need about six of them then, not just two. Do you oh, know 100%, what I mean? 100%, yeah, you'll have, yeah, you'll, yeah, have, yeah, you'll have an yeah. army We'll have an out. army with us, yeah. 100%. Sure. Now, we'll, I'll be there somewhere in the crowd. You'll see yeah, me. Like, do you got me? It'd be yeah. cool, man. Well, that's the thing, like, this is the thing, cool, like, man. I say anyone that comes and buys a ticket to my fight, we always organise somewhere to go afterwards yeah. because I can't always catch everyone. So we always say, you've got an entry. I'll, I'll pay the cover to, to get everyone into the bar. So everyone gets into the bar for free yeah. and that's it then. Come and enjoy yourself. I will turn up after. I don't, I don't, I do drink, but I don't drink after a fight. Once you've taken head trauma, you can't, I can't risk anything that's going to happen. So, and I'm not really a big drinker now that I'm focusing more on boxing. So I'll go turn up in water, but I'll see everyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I like to spend that time because I like to thank the people that have come to support me. Do you know what I mean? They've come to support me. The least I can do is go and just shake the hand and say, thanks for coming down. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah, you enjoy yeah, your night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's everyone, cool, get, everyone gets an wicked. open ticket to come and, to come and watch. Wicked. I always get to catch everyone after, yeah, which is man. nice, man. That's, that's a good thing That's so see. good, man. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. Dylan, it's been an absolute opportunity. It's sure, been yeah. an absolute pleasure and an honor having you here. Is there anything you want to send a message out to everyone listening to this? I know you've I know you've hit upon it a load of times. Yeah. You touched upon it talking about when you did your A yeah. levels. I haven't forgotten about how mentally that that helped you uh, as well as physically as well. But yeah. is there anything you want to send a message out to any all the listeners out there? Hundred percent. All I'm gonna say is look, any junior kid, yeah, adult, anyone watching this now, get yourself into a gym. Get yourself down to Warriors. Yeah, yeah. In being Coventry, get yourself down to Warriors. If you're in Birmingham, come and train with me on a Friday night. We do an open session. Come and smash the bags with me. I ain't bothered. Get yourself into a gym and get yourself on the journey. Whether you want to become a champion or you want to become an athlete or you want to do it to lose weight, so be it. Everyone's got different goals. Get yourself in a gym. It's gonna help you. But thank you to everyone for the support, man. Because it's been crazy. But this is only the start. I'm telling you, this like, even though we've blown up overnight, I say we because we're all one fighting family. Um, because we've all blew, blew up overnight, it's just the start. We're on the platform now and we're only going to do big things. And I believe that like in there, we 100%. are going to do big things. 100% now, respect. And you touched upon it as well, where you you're, you always say on the mic, Chuck, the for all the yeah. listeners out there that don't understand what that means, that means getting the victories. Let's get the victories. Let's pick yeah. the victories up. Um and that's what basically I was saying is in, in, in our culture, in our, in our language as well. So now respect, That's Dylan. It. It's you, an man. absolute pleasure. Appreciate it. Respect.